make a comment or ask a question that you use the raise hand icon at the top of your screen. Once you have clicked the icon, uh, the administrator, Mr. Gale, will identify you. And once it is time for you to ask your question, you will be asked to do so by the administrator, Mr. Gale, or myself. I will be the moderator for today. For those who have the program, you will realize that the moderator for Wednesday, September 30, is Yannick Edwards. And for Thursday, October 1, it will be Michael Daly. And for Friday, October 2, it will be Miss Audrey Seale. These are the persons who will be moderating and they will be asking you to open your mic or close it along with Mr. Gale, who is the administrator from the IT department. Uh, if you are having any issue, any challenge, you have already in your email the account, sorry, the phone number, the telephone number for Mr. Gale or myself or the email addresses for both of us. You can send us an email or Give us a call outside of this time frame and we'll be happy to join, to answer and to address your issue. If you're having, or if you know of anyone, or if you are having issue joining the virtual orientation via Teams, you can also join it. If you're not able to join it through Teams, you can also join it through YouTube and that link is also sent to you. All right. So let me welcome you to the 2020 orientation at the GC Foster College. In short order, we will be having our principal, Mr. Maurice Wilson, giving his greetings. Let me also let you know that our Vice Principal for Academic Affairs, Mrs. Stoney James, is also a part of this meeting. And she will be allowed to bring greetings to you. Let me also welcome Mrs. Sophia Watson White. Welcome, Mrs. White. Also, Mr. Michael Daly is a part of the orientation committee. Mr. Renton Harris, and Ms. Yvonne Dixon. They are all a part of the orientation committee. So the orientation is designed, ladies and gentlemen, to allow you to have a complete knowledge of the activities that we will be taking part in as it relates to your academics, to give you a brief introduction as to some life skills that you can employ while enrolled in the college, as well as to assist you or to empower you to handle conflicts in a more manageable manner. We also will be looking at ways to cope with 
ways to cope with stress or stressors. And the orientation is designed to prepare you for your new venture for your enrollment in the college some of the skills that you need and to equip you also with the knowledge of the institution how to get around what to apply for which department to apply to uh, how to use the various facilities such as the gym, the library, and how to access certain information. Um, we'll be doing some virtual tours, and these tours are geared toward providing you with the necessary information for you to navigate your way when you have actually been allowed to attend school physically. We recognize that, and Mrs. Stoney is speaking to how we will go forward in teaching our process. As just We will be having the address by our principal, Mr. I will be in momentarily hearing the greetings from our principal, Mr. Wilson.
Gail will be sharing with us a promotional video. This will give you a sense of what the college has to offer and the great institution that you are now a part of, all right? we prepare for that I'm going to open the floor a bit I'm going to ask you if you're properly dressed to open your your camera so that we can see you and we're going to ask you to just introduce yourself not less than 10 seconds just tell me your name where you're from and which school you're coming from all right I will start in alphabetical order, so I'll go with Adiana. Ajni Williams. Hello. The person... Um, who is SW? Please make sure that you mute your mic. That's Sabina Williams. Please keep your mic. Okay? You have a noise about that. Thank you. Right. So, Williams? Yes, Williams. Right. Introduce yourself. Afternoon. I am Eugenie Williams. I am from Maryland District, referred St. Andrew. Okay. Papine High. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. We're not seeing you, though. All right. Next person, Alando. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Alan McIntosh, and I'm from Montego Bay, St. James, and I'm coming from Irwin High School. Okay. Thank you, sir. Andre. The dormer. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Yes. My name is Andre Dharma. I live in 74 Old Lava Road. And um, I used to attend Inside High School. My name is Andre Dharma. School? I am not hearing. Good evening, sir. Yes, who is this now? Adiana. Oh, continue. My name is Adiana Brown. I'm from Montego Bay, St. James. I used to attend the Rosie's High School. Okay, thank you very much. So we have Brianna now. Brianna Breckenridge, could you kindly introduce yourself? It's Brian Breckenridge. Yes. Um, oh. My name is yeah. Brian Breckenridge. I live in Jonathan, St. Mary. And right. I am coming from St. Mary High School. Okay, thank you, sir. Cedric Pullman. <laughs> You're up. Thank <laughs> you. 
Cedric. Let's find you to me. Right, go ahead. Good afternoon. My name is Cedric Pullman. I'm from yes. Sarinan. I'm from Dempe High School. Okay. Thank you. Crystal. Okay. Mr. Michael. Mike. Timothy Ricky Shire, I think I feel the dark. All right. So next person, Chris Tangwe. Shadi Bartley, mute your mic, please. Thank you. Crystal, your time. Unmute your mic and speak. Hello? Crystal, go ahead. Yeah, my name is Crystal Irving, and I'm from Montego Bay, and I am coming from the Hopewell High School. All right, next person, Colleen. Mr. <coughs> Mr. Mr. Smith. Hello? Yes, sir. You hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Are you hear me loud and clear? I'm not hearing you. Say something now. Yes, sir, I'm hearing you. Mr. Smith. Sir. Yes, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. Yes. Are you hearing me? But say something. I'm not hearing you. My mic not working. My mic not working. Testament. I'm here now. I'm here. Well, I am not hearing you. Testing one, two, three. Something wrong with Mr. Wilson computer. Andre. Jesus. Mr. Parks, are you hearing me? Well, I am not hearing you. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Wilson, you hear me now? You hear me now? Mr. Wilson? Mr. Isaac. Mr. Wilson. How are you? Not bad at all. All right. Um, so while we work on the technical glitches, Colleen, you can go ahead. Good afternoon. Afternoon. My name is Colleen Young. I'm from Waterhouse, Kingston, and I used to attend St. Hughes High School. Okay, great. Next we have Colleen Turner. Colleen Turner, your time. On you to my country. Mr. Turner, let's unmute your mic and speak and introduce yourself. Mr. Smith, are you hearing me? Yes, Lord, sir. Are you hearing me, 
All right, Colin Turner, are you there? Colin Turner. Uh, Mr. Whistle, yes, yes, yes. we are hearing you loud and clear. Oh, um, not hearing you now, not hearing you now at all. Not hearing you at all. Not hearing you if you're speaking, we're not hearing you. Hello, hello, Mike Chuck. Yes. Here, Mr. Boga. Okay. All right. Um, Colin Turner, your time to introduce yourself. Are you hearing me now, sir? Yes, I'm hearing you now. Loud and clear. Me? I Very am good. hearing you loud and clear. Very good. Very good. So as you as you know, I am coming off a site visit. Yes, sir. I'm coming off our site visit where we went to look at some equipment All right. that we're getting at half price. So I was I was in the sun for three or four hours. <laughs> I just came in up it. I just ran in. But I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yes, I am. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, our principal is now ready to greet us. Uh I'm asking you to kindly listen attentively, attentively as he addresses us. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Wilson. Thank you very much, sir. So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport. It is both an honor and privilege to stand, well, I am not standing, I'm sitting before you today to welcome you to an amazing institution, amazing college, maybe the best institution that offers what we do in this part of the world. G.C. Foster was given as a gift to the Jamaican people by the Cuban government. And this was 40 years ago. The institution itself has produced numerous world-class netballers, cricketers, footballers, athletes, and most importantly, a number of sport administrators. The college has been the site for numerous historical sporting moments. One that I can recall clearly, before Asafa Powell broke the world record, his first sub 10 seconds was run at GC Foster College. Before Houston Bolt ran a hundred meters, as a senior, his first hundred meters was run at the institution. Also, the great bobsleigh team that you have heard about, they started training at GC Foster College and they are still training at the institution. You may be asking yourself some questions. Did I make the right choice? Is this worth the sacrifice? And I'm going to answer it for you. Of course, you made the right choice to attend the most rounded college in this part of the hemisphere. But those students who are here for one year, I will reliably inform you that GC Foster, more than any other institution, helped you to matriculate into Division I institutions in America. And this is not comparable to any other institution in Jamaica, not UWE, not UTEC, because of the courses that we do offer. In fact, I can assure you that every one of you that I'm speaking to deserve to be in an institution of this kind. 
I can assure you that you can bring something new and exciting to this diverse community. And so I welcome you. I encourage you to be open to new ideas and experiences, new directions. I want for you to enjoy your college experience. You are in a field that is a very diverse one. And in this field, you are able to branch off into many different areas. I want for you to embrace the opportunities that this institution offers. I will conclude by offering you some simple advice. First of all, you need to know the philosophy of the college. You need to love your institution. You must be consistent with your studies. You are going to be investing a lot of money in your education. So you should make sure that you make use of all the opportunities that present itself. I want for you to share your knowledge and skills. Those of you who are a little bit above others in terms of what you know. Don't keep your knowledge and skills to yourself. Challenge yourself and your peers on a daily basis. Embrace each other's passion. I want to, I want to implore you, uh, first years, to make sure that you obey the protocols re the COVID, the, the pandemic. It is a responsibility, it's a social responsibility that everyone must take seriously. So it is not about someone enforcing a protocol. You must make sure that you wear your mask, you practice social distance, distancing, sorry, you sanitize on a regular basis to protect yourself and to protect, protect others. I want for you to absorb everything that this college has to offer. But most importantly, and above all things, I want for you to have fun. I want your college experience to be a memorable one. I want to thank you for listening. Welcome to GC Foster College, greatest institution in the Caribbean and possibly the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, our esteemed principal, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Park, and thank you for all the hard work, yourself and Mr. Okonsanya and the team. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. It was a real team effort and headed by you, sir. So thank you so much for your leadership. Thank you very much, too, sir. Yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be going into our first presentation at this time. And this is the use of the ISINS system. The presenter is our Manager for the IT department, Mr. Okensanya Smith. Mr. Smith will be speaking to you now on the ISIM system. Mr. Smith, over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Are you hearing me so far? Okay. Yes, sir. We're hearing you, hearing you. Yeah, good afternoon. I had instructed Welcome them to, to keep their mind muted until um, you asked them to open, sir. That's why you're not hearing any response. Okay. Welcome to GC Foster College and thank you for joining us today. Uh, most of you will have been familiar with iSIMS already as it relates to an application standpoint as a student. Today, I want to introduce you to some of the other features that exist in iSIMS, which you will be using going forward. So I will be sharing my screen in a bit to show you some of the things that you are supposed to pay close attention to and how you'll be using iSIMS throughout your tenure as a student.
So currently on screen, you should be seeing my screen as I have shared that with you. Please confirm that you're seeing my screen. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So you yes, should see sir. the familiar. Yes, sir. Yes, you yes, sir. should see the, the, the familiar interface of iSIMS. So on the left hand side, my mouse is green and I've done that just to ensure that you can see what I'm doing. Um, normally the mouse is small and white. So on the left hand side, you'll see home, apply, accept offer, acceptance, documents, activate account, online payment, library catalog, and contact. If you I'm not scroll seeing down, it. pardon me? I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing a screen. Nobody is seeing my screen? I am not seeing current. I'm, I'm seeing I'm seeing I'm seeing I'm seeing your screen. Okay, let me just stop sharing. Not right, let me just stop sharing and reshare. I just see a black background, you know. Okay. Let me just stop sharing and start sharing again to see if that will fix it. Hey guys, you want to wear your mask, you know? So I'm going to share again. And please tell me if you're seeing now. Yes, sir, I am. I'm seeing, sir. Okay, I'm seeing. thank you for that. Sure. So as I was discussing before, over to the left-hand side, you have the navigation area where you'll see all these menus. Once you log into iSIMS, the menu items, some of them will change depending on where you are in the system. However, I want you to pay close attention to the front page. All right. The instructions here are for new students and staff on how to activate account. And if you want to activate your account, you click on the hyperlink that says activate account. If you are unsure of how to activate your account, there are tutorial videos below, right? Videos that show you how to apply the application process how to activate your account, that's a video. I'm moving my mouse cursor over. How to register for courses or how to select your courses. How to add DC for Still not seeing anything. Pardon me? Still not seeing. Their person is not seeing or is... Uh, are there are only a few persons person not seeing? Are not seeing the, the, the presentation with is being recorded and will be sent to you all right okay, okay sir so those who are seeing can follow me for now and those who are not seeing will be able to catch up on youtube it is, it is the, the link is also on youtube and it will be there after we have we have completed this presentation or this orientation so okay, how to apply once you click on the how to apply uh, link it should take you to YouTube and it will give you a video on how to apply to the college how to activate your account should also take you to YouTube and it should yield a video on how to activate your account how to register for courses or how to select your courses will take you also to YouTube and how to add GCFC as a pay in your e-banking platform so this last video that um, I am still hovering at is specific to NCB e-link. And as you may know, for COVID, we try to ensure that persons use all the electronic means to communicate with us and also to make whatever payments they have to make to the college. So if you have an NCB e-banking platform or if you do e-banking with NCB, then you should be able to add us as a payee, just like you would add JPS, NWC, CNW Jamaica, and make the payments, whatever payments you have to make to the college, you can do so through that channel. There's another option which I will show you once I get inside of ISIM. Below, you have quick links and forms. Here, we have digitized all our forms to ensure that persons do not have to visit the campus.
to make a request for any service that we provide. So if you need to change your status as a student, that means if you want to go on a leave of absence, you can do so using the change of status request form. If you need exemption from a course because you're coming from a college or another institution um, that you sat the course before, you can do so using the course exemption request. You can make a request for your progress report using the progress report request form. You can, you can also make requests for refund using the refund request form. You can request a receipt of a course. Sorry. You can do a status data request and you can also make a transcript request using the forms on the front page. Now, I want you throughout your tenure to ensure that you pay close attention to this front page as things may change there and any video or tutorial which we want you guys to be aware of will be added to this front page. Any other form that you should have access to will be added to this front page. So I would like you guys to pay close attention to it during your tenure. Now, as a student, the first thing you need to do as a new student is to activate your account. And to do that, you'll select activate account. Here, the system will validate your identity by asking you for your ID number, which is issued by the Student Services Department. It will ask you for your TRN, and this should be the same TRN number that you use to apply. If at the time of your application, you did not have a TRN and we created a temporary TRN for you, you should use a temporary TRN to validate your identity. Once you get your TRN, you should give that information to us so that we, we can make the necessary updates on the system for you. The system will also require your date of birth and to input your date of birth, you pick that. Like you can hear, you get a drop down calendar and you choose the year and the day and the month. It will also require your last name and the program that you applied for. Now, I have seen where persons may have had a change of mind. So they may have applied for a bachelor's and now they want to do an associate degree. That change can be made after you have activated your account. So whatever program you applied for, that is a program you need to put here. You need to select it from the list. There is also a capture which is required to ensure that system validates that you're not a robot that is trying to hack the system. So you'll have to input these characters that are on screen exactly as is on screen. Once that is done, you will be taken to another screen which will give you access to set up your password and your challenge question. The challenge question is used in the event that you forget your password. It will ask you that question again and resend the new password or the reset password to your email account, which you have attached to the system. All students will be given an email address at gcfc.edu.jm and that would be your ID number. So let's say, for example, my ID number is 1602835. My email address will be 16028. 355 at gcfc.edu.jm. All right. So I'm going to log in as a student to take you through the process quickly. And as I said before, there are videos here that show you how to complete all these tasks that are necessary within the system. So I'm going to log in as a student.
Just bear with me as I reset the student password to log in as a student. This test two is a student. I'm gonna log out and log in as a student. So the system will deny you access once you have not inputted the correct password. And if you do so five times, you will be locked out of your account. And you will have to either supply your challenge question or ask or send an email for your account to be unlocked. This has to be done due to the fact that we have integrations with other platforms, the NTB platform, and they require that these safeguards be put into the system to ensure that their system is not compromised also by ours. So let us look at the student's profile. Once you log in as a student, the first thing or the first tab that you are presented with is your alerts tab. Your alerts tab gives information that is pertinent to your account. So if you are failing too many courses and you're on academic probation, this is where the information will be shown, right? If you have not handed in your medical, if you have not paid your fees, this is where the information will be shown and all the information that you should pay close attention to is in a different color on the system red all right so red means danger so that is the color that was chosen to ensure that you pay close attention to it red also means stop stop and read all right so the first tab you should always go to on the system is the alerts tab the next tab that we need to pay attention to, and this is a tab, this is a tab, this is a tab, here's another tab, is the bio data tab. The bio data tab contains information about yourself, your next of kin, and your emergency contacts. Any of this information that has changed, you need to make the update here, all right? Once you have made the update, you can select the update profile option and it should send the updated information to the student services department who will approve the update. Now here we have two other very important tabs. As a matter of fact, they are of equal importance as all the other tabs. And the tab that I'm talking about is the financial data tab. And this is where you'll select your billing method and your payment plan so if you are a student who is paying all your fees for the year this is where you select that option when it is presented to you if you are a student who is just paying for the semester this is where you select that option when it's presented to you the payment plans if the financial data tab is omitted or if you do not complete the tasks which you should complete on the under the financial data tab then you will not have access to all the data which is necessary for you to complete your course selection under the registration tab so once you have completed all that you need to do under the financial data tab you may then go to the registration tab now the registration tab allows you to select the courses that you'll be doing in the current semester. On the registration tab, there are categories, courses, course, credits, start date, end date, day, start time, end time, room, lecture, and group. Those are the headings. Also very importantly, 
under the registration tab is a button that says register once you have selected your courses this button needs to be selected or clicked if it has not been clicked you have not selected your courses if it has not been clicked you have not selected your courses so to select your courses there's a checkbox beside each course you select the checkbox as i am doing now on screen and once you have completed selecting your checkbox or all the checkboxes which are appropriate to your program you will select the register button and you should get a confirmation message on screen saying that registered successfully you should also get an email with a receipt called a registration receipt which lists the courses that you have selected that you'll be doing for that semester also on the right hand side of the page this is what i should have done first but due to the fact that we english people read from left to right i opted to start at the tabs but in the top right hand side you see current program it shows you the program that you are pursuing at the college right below that program you'll see an icon that says moodle i'll get back to that shortly and below that you will see pertinent information pertaining to the semester it tells you if the semester is open it also tells you when registration begins when it ends when the late registration begins and when it ends so back to the moodle icon Moodle is our course management system which we'll be using this semester to offer the courses online. We'll be using a blended modality and blended means that there will be some amount of face-to-face -face contact with the teacher. However, the, largest, the larger portion of the course will be offered online. All right. There is also a video that I'll be placing in the videos tutorial section which shows you how to navigate Moodle and what happens when the button is clicked so once the button is clicked it should take you straight to the Moodle platform and show you the courses that you have selected now due to the fact that I have not selected any course and I am not in a valid student profile I am not allowed access to Moodle. So that is it for iSIMS. If there are any questions, I will take them right after I go through the online payment here on the front page. Also, there's an online payment option that you can use to pay your fees through the, IC the iSIMS platform, and that is done through NCB. So the two options that you have of online payment are using your e-link platform or your e-banking the e-banking option from your ncb account or you could use your credit card on the isim system to make the payment once the payment is made using isims three receipts are generated one is sent to the accounts department one is sent to the it department and the other will be sent to the student. So any student that makes a payment on the system will get a receipt and the accounts department will also get a receipt of the payment and the payment details. Once you have completed a program, you also have the option of applying for a new program. And here it is below, apply online if you're interested in another program. I am now open for any questions that you may have let me see if i can bring this up i'm gonna stop sharing any questions any assistance needed hi hello hi hello good afternoon Good afternoon. My name is Annika Reynolds. 
Yes, Miss Williams. Miss Reynolds. Yes. yes. Um. Asking. Um. So, like you said, our IDs is what we're supposed to use for when we're going to log into iSIMS. Are we yes, going to be taking ID number? Yeah. Are we going to be taking IDs for us to get that, or we're going to be sent it via Gmail? It will be sent to you. It will be sent to you. Oh, okay. And um, what was I going to say? Our classes will it be. I know it will be over the internet, but is it the same? Um, this this exact same software or Zoom or anything other than that. Oh, there will be an integration with Teams, so Microsoft Teams will be the the software that will be used by teachers. Okay, thank you. That is all for now. Okay, and um, if you need any assistance, ladies and gentlemen, we also have. I'm gonna share my screen again. We also have a live help system that we use that you can use to leave messages for us and if we are online we will respond immediately so the live help is right in the lower right hand corner of the screen and if we are online offline once you click it you can input your name your email address and the message so if we are online you will be taken to a live chat that you can get immediate assistance. All right. So that is one of the options that you have of contacting us. You can also contact us via email or telephone. The email addresses are student services at gcfc.edu.jm and IT department that is IT D E P T at gcfc.edu.jm. For the accounts department is accounts at gcfc.edu.jm. All right. So, Mr. Park, over to you. Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you and so much, Mr. We'll Smith. Be, we'll be Very interacting. Presentation. In the I'm sure that the participants would have learned a lot from it. Thank you for your time, sir. I know that you're a very busy man. Thank you, sir. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going straight into another presentation. And uh, it, we find it very prudent to have on a yearly basis an expert to come in and to speak to us on conflict resolution. Uh, we recognize that cyberbullying is rampant now on the various platforms. And we do not want our students to be participating in such acts. Also, when it as it relates to a face-to-face -face basis, persons do not know how to resolve their conflicts in an amicable way. And so we have the expert here to guide us through the process. His name is Mr. Paul Hines. He is the director for training at the Dispute Resolution Foundation. Uh, Mr. Hines have a wealth of experience and will be able to address this topic in the most able way. I'm going to ask you to write down your questions if you have them and to give him your full attention all right kind of remember to mute your mics until he so requests of you to speak if he asks you to turn on your cameras kindly do so and we want you to participate fully in the discussions when the time arrives for such discussions, all right? So ladies and gentlemen, please now listen to our presenter, Mr. Paul Hines from the Dispute Resolution Foundation. Welcome, Sir Hines, and thank you so much for taking the time out to be with us. Thank you, Paul. 
Yes, sir. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. So hearing you clearly. Okay, so let me just get my presentation up. And just a small correction. I'm not the director of training, but that doesn't matter too seriously. All right. The point is that I'm able to have a conversation today with all your students. How many are now in orientation? We have over, let me check the latest stats and tell you. We have 72 now on board. Okay. Okay. So let me just get my stuff up too. All right. So am I on screen now? Yes, you're on screen. Can you see my presentation? I'm going to be out for about 15 minutes. Okay. So it's over to you and then I'll rejoin. Can you see the presentation? Yes, sir, fully. Okay, great. So good afternoon, students. Melanie, you can respond, you know, with a like, hello. Let me just say welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon, good afternoon sir. Good Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Okay, so let me add my quote of welcome. I was once a student, so I know what it feels like to be participating in orientation. And some of you may have maybe have a lot of nerves and a little bit of anxiety. Well, this is not, it's normal. It's not a big deal. So I wanna start by saying just greetings, salutations and congratulations. Today is the first day of a new life for each of you, as you know, part of the family, so to speak, of the GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport. How do you feel being on your first day in your new life? Any comments? <laughs> I didn't hear that comment. Mm -hmm. I feel okay. Feel okay. Anyone else? Good so far. Feels good. Good so far. Yes. Anyone so far, else? Good. So far it's good. Anyone nervous? So far it's good. It's good so far. Anyone anxious? Wants to get on with it? Yes. Yes, sir. You are okay. You are. It feels anxious. so weird. Yeah, you expected to be on campus, and now you're online. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, that's something that you'll have to adjust to. So long as we have COVID nineteen around with us. So I want to, since I've mentioned COVID nineteen and this whole new life, let me just walk you through my startup. I, I want to give you a couple of quotes to set the seed for our discussions on conflict resolution by talking about change. So here's a comment that came from a former prime minister of England. He said to improve is to change. To be perfect is to change often. What do you think about that particular comment? That to improve is to change. And to change is to, to be perfect is to change often. What do you think about that comment? Um, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. I'm Monique speaking. When I, I hear that comment, I'm thinking about lifelong learning. It means that I am at a, I'm at stage A, and as I learn new things, I adjust so that I can reach the stage B. So it's a continuous process. So you are so it, so, so you will be willing to change as you improve, and so you'll accept that to to improve is to change. What about being perfect? Yes, I agree. Definitely. How about heading for perfection? That means you have to change very often. That also um, grabs perfection. You? Um, yes, it, it also grabs me. When I think of heading to perfection or working towards perfection, it's actually looking within yourself. Um, for instance, we're training now to become teachers. And so we're looking within ourselves to see how best we can improve to cater to our students, cater to our, our learning environment, cater to our employers, cater even to ourselves um, to further our education. But you notice what Churchill said, he said to be perfect is to change often. So there's no static, static, you can't be static, you have to be changing very often if you're heading towards perfection. 
What about the second statement from Nelson Mandela? Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Any reaction to this particular statement? Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Anyone has such lofty goals that you're at GC Foster because you want to change the world, the world of athletics, the world of athletics administration, world of physical education. Anyone is having that worldview? I don't want to be speaking out of turn often. Um, but for me, um, it is an honor being a GC Foster. I have I've dreamt of this moment for such a long time. And um, my goal is after I've completed my degree um, in physical education and sports is actually to go into policy making. I want to do my master's in curriculum development, focusing on physical education because I want to attach myself, my goal towards um, channeling healthy lifestyle with education because I believe that if we're able to nip it in the bud now in which students uh, make healthy lifestyle a practice from the early childhood level, then when we become adults, we won't have the prob we won't have problems such as um, the non-communicable diseases, which which is on the rise now. So we would actually, I would actually be positioning myself to help um, unlock the issues that we're facing today. So you want to change the world. You want to change the world from where we're now having all these poor nutritional choices to one little bit more healthy choices. <coughs> That's interesting. Anyone yes, else? Sir. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, let me move on. Let me share two more quotes with you. Here's another one that says, if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. That's from Maya Angelou, very famous poet out of the United States. Any comments on that one? If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. Any comments on that quote? Anyone was expecting, everyone would have been expecting to go on campus. True or false? Yeah. True. True. Right. True. Right. Well, can you change COVID-19 right now? No, you can't. So, no, you can't. So are you willing to change your attitude about being online? Yes. Yes. You can adapt to every situation, to every change. So you have to adjust your attitude? Yeah, adapt as best as possible to the situation. So you can improve in improve in how you react and how you will at, at, um, move forward to the situation. Because if we, if we were on the campus, we would be more nervous or are Maybe excited. Excited, yes, to see the different surrounding. See so the different students. It is, um, yes, but I'm familiar with the campus because I am an athlete. So in chat me keep, I will be on the campus and etc. So you know, shifting from being the athlete to being the administrator, the teacher, the coach. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you for that. Look at the next statement. It says, change is the law of life. And those who look only to the past and present are certain to miss the future. That's from a former president of the United States, John F. Kennedy. Any comments on that comment, on that quote? Change is the law of life. And those who look only to the past and present are certain to miss the future. Any comments on that one? I think. Sir, can you please repeat? Can you see this slideshow? Are you only hearing me? We can see. 
Oh, so some persons can tell, some persons only hear. Okay, let I'm me I'm only hearing. Okay, let me repeat it for your benefit, my dear. It says, change is the law of life. And those who look only to the past and present are certain to miss the future. And that's from John F. Kennedy, former president of the United States. So any comments on that statement? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Um, when they only look, when they only look at the past and the present, they, they don't know. They they feel like they can't go further into the future. They're they're being they held too much back with their past. So with thinking of that now, they they don't know how to accept things of how they are, so they can move forward. And like the same thing with my Angelo said, you have to change your attitude. So yeah, but you can't change it. Yeah. But isn't the future going to be created by what you do? To yes. an extent, that's not always necessarily true. Wow, but your connection is not good. Not hearing me? It, well, it was very blurred a while ago. Um, you're hearing clearer now? Yes, uh, a lot clearer yes, now. Uh, a lot clearer now. Oh, I think the quote is speaking more about the I think you have a bad connection because as soon as you started speaking, it just became blurred and all of what you said, I just lost. I'm so sorry. But I think I got the main part of your first point, which was that to a certain extent, what you do will shape the future. And if all the students who are now in their first year at GC Foster, <coughs> make it their best year and decide to do some things, then you will all change the future. There may be a future that you don't, there may be a present you don't like now. As Maya, and just, Maya Angelo suggested, if you can't, if you don't like it, change it. So if you think that, well, you know, we could be doing better with nutrition and nutritional choices. We could be doing better in terms of being more effective as athletes or effective as coaches of athletes. That's what you can change because that's all in your hands. The future is in your hands. What you do will shape the future. If you don't, someone else will do it and that will shape the future. So I think that's what I get from Kennedy that changes the law of life. And if you look only to the past and the present, you're certain to miss the future. So what you do will shape it. Any other comments? Okay, so, sorry, go ahead. Someone started to speak, and I'm sorry I interrupted you. Could you just finish what you're about to say? I know these quotes are thought provoking, so if at any time you want to give some feedback on it, it's quite fine. Let me move on. So I want us to now look at, for those who can see, I'm putting up three circles on the screen. One says it's about relationships. So it's one says online, one says school, and one is saying home. And I have 70 30 online and school, and home 100. What do you understand these circles to be talking about? Anyone? It is, talk it is talking about time spent. Yes. Time spent online to school or home. Yes. That's one. And what else? I'm thinking of time management. Yes. Time management. Yes. What else? Where we will be spending our time most of the days. Yes, yeah, so where will you be spending most of your time most of the days? Is it online? 
for this one most of the time is at home, which is 100 percent. Right, but I percent while you're at home, you will be online. Right. Percent of the time you will be at school. Right. So you actually physically go to GC faster. So yes, where it says 30 percent of school. Right. So think about this. So you're at home and you want to dedicate 70 percent of your time to get your instructions online. And you have all kinds of interruptions. You have people at home who are disturbing you. People coming there to talk to you when they shouldn't be talking to you. How will you react when those things happen? What will you do? I'm sorry, come again, sir. I'm saying that you're home and 70% of the time that you're spending at home, you're expected to be spending online to get instructions from your tutors and your instructors at GC Foster. And the other 30% of the time, you'll go into GC Foster and you'll have actual face-to-face -face and participate in whatever is there to be done. So I'm saying, let us say that you're at home and you're trying assiduously to dedicate your 70% of your time to online instructions, but you have persons interrupting you, they want to ask you a question, people dropping in unexpectedly and disturbing you. How will you manage those interruptions? Well, to me, I think you have to like address to your family members or whoever is there living with you to let them know that um, I have class this time, so I need to know if anyone's gonna be dropping by or this and that, or if I should go somewhere else to keep to be in my class or anything like that. So you'll have a conversation with them. Anyone else? Anyone else? How about some of the males in the audience? How will you deal with the interruptions? One of your brethren come check you and say, well, I'm boss, I'm gonna look at you, I'm gonna talk to you, I'm gonna Well, um, we have to just go straight what time is. Let them Say it again. Tell them straight what time is it. It's not time for them, it's time for the work. And if they persist, then what? They have to leave. They have to leave? Yes, they have to you leave. You have to take them out physically and say, look, check me later on the bus. Come have class time. Nobody check me this time. You'll be willing yes. to do that? Yes. Okay. Anyone else? What about, so you're now online? Hello. Sorry. Yes, go ahead, please. Good afternoon, Sabrina speaking. Hi, Sabrina. Um, some of the time it's not the person who is around you causing destruction. The same phone can cause the destruction sometimes. Somebody send you a WhatsApp message or Instagram message. Or, yeah, so you have to manage that. Yeah. Okay. What about interruptions? Not just distractions, but actual interruptions. How do you manage those interruptions? Uh, it's just like today, you don't find a quiet place to go where you don't have nobody there to talk to you or not. It's what you want. Okay. So hopefully you can find a very quiet place where you can isolate yourself and just pay attention to your online instructions and you participate fully, give it your full attention. One of the okay. things, oops, sorry, I, I was saying, I was just repeating that you are going to find a, a location that is secured and somewhat secluded so it allows you privacy so you can focus on your online instructions and your online participation 
Yeah. Now, what do you think is going to be the biggest contrast between being on campus and being online? To me, I think it's um, all right, when you go to school, being on campus, you it's a learning environment, so you're supposed to learn, you know, you have to interact. But it's online, they want us to learn in an environment where we sleep, eat, and play games. So it is going to be hard, but at the same time, you know, you got to give it your all. Good. I like that, which takes me now into the kinds of relationships and some that will be a bit of a challenge to us. So let's look a little bit at some of what is to be coming. So I want us to look at what is conflict. Anyone could tell me what is a conflict? A disagreement between two parties, I guess. Disagreement between two parties. So any disagreement between two parties is called a conflict. Anything else? Any other way we can define what is a conflict? Let uh, me share. Difference of opinions. Okay. So let me share with you what could be. So we may have different interests or different needs or different goals. And because we have these different needs, interests or goals, and we're participating in the same space, we may be on the same team or in the same group, there is a conflict about whether we should do A, B or C based on the different interests, goals or needs. Everyone agree so far? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. For those who can see, what are you seeing on the screen right now? I'm disagreeing. You see that disagreement? Look at those two. Look at those two figures on the table. What oh, do you think? They're, they're in a fight. They're into a fight. And why do you think they're into a fight? I think that they were in a meeting and that something arose and these two people disagreed about it. To the extent that they're now on the table and about to do something else. Yes. Right. So that's another, that's a, a graphic about conflict. Look at what and how this conflict is defined here. It says it involves struggles between two or more people over their differences in values or competition for status or competition for power or competition for scarce resources. Just think about that for a second. So we are disagreeing over our differences in values. So for example, I might like this, you like that, and because our, our likes are different, we disagree about the this and the that. Or it could be based on our religious outlook, which are part of our values. Or you want to be the star. You were the athlete at high school and you always got all the adoration and all the props. And now you're at college and you still want that. So there's a competition between yourself and myself about who should be the star, who should get the recognition, who should get all the ratings, who should get full 100 and who get 10. Competition for status. And then you may participate in student government. Who has power? Should it be the women? Should it be the men? And what about scarce resources? The resources are scarce and we have to share them. How do we share them? So this is another way of looking at conflict. Any comments on this? Mm. 
Does any of this sound familiar? Yes. Which part of it sounds familiar? Where the person in high school was the star. Yes. Then come to college expecting the same treatment. And they actually want to get it from everybody. Yeah. So there's competition for status. Yes, sir. Anyone else? Anything else that looks familiar? Anyone plans to be part of student government on campus? Anyone used to be part of student student government when you were in high school or in your previous school life? Okay, let me move on then. So, now let me ask you this question. Is conflict good or bad? Conflict is bad. Terrible. Conflict is bad. It's terrible. Why is it bad? Why is conflict bad? Conflict is bad because um, when you have a disagreement between two or more persons, um, you don't know how that person would take it mentally, so they might have they might take it to a far extent how we saw it in the presentation a while ago. Okay. So for that reason, um, can't be my, bad. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. My take is that conflict is neither good nor bad. Um. That's the reality is that is the way that you respond to conflict that will negate if it is good or if it is bad. For instance, um, persons who have a disagreement and then one person end up hurts another, then you would say the conflict between the two parties would have been something that was bad. However, I'm having a conflict within myself, whether or not I should, um, with which major I should take or which college I should attend. That's a good conflict because it has given you a chance to research to see the offerings of one institution over another. So I think it's the way that we respond to conflict that will tell if it's good or bad. Okay, anyone else? Is conflict good or bad? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I How am Sakini Stoner. Hey, Sakini Stoner. Yes. Um, conflict for me, um, it can be either good or bad. It's just the outcome at the end of it. Because conflict encourages freedom of speech, open-mindedness. It allows you to express yourself. So if somebody make a point and you know that it is not um true or it's not the correct thing to do the bonus is on you as an individual to counteract what that person says and not sit back and allow the wrong thing to be happening so it can be either good or bad it just depends on the outcome so let me ask you sakina suppose the person sankini sankini oh, i'm so sorry thank you yes. for the correction suppose the person's expression which you disagree with is their experience. Would you still voice your opinion? Say again. I said, suppose the person's statement that they are expressing that you disagree with is based on their experience. Would you still try to correct what you're saying? Yes, I could because your experience might not be my experience. I could have, ex you might experience one thing, something one way and I might have experienced it another way. So your experience might not necessarily be mine, so I can still counter up what you're saying based on my own life experience. So why would you want to counteract it instead of add? Well, well then, my correction, I could okay. add. <laughs> yes. So Thank in this you. case, country can be good. Yes, it can be good. Because we hear two different experiences and we can share and say, okay, that was yours, your man was a little different. So we I can look at two different experiences. Yes. Right. Yes, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, let me move on. 
Now, let me give you a little exposure to different types of conflict. So the first one I would say is what I'd call interpersonal conflict, where someone may be exhibiting poor emotional intelligence. So it could be about the choice of words, when you say those words at the right time or the wrong time, who you say it to and whether you say it in a way that somebody feels demeaned or offended. It could be poor home training. Let us say that you're online and you are eating and your mic is on and we're hearing your mouth chopping, chop, chop, chop. That'd be poor home training or you know, poor socialization. So those are the interpersonal types of conflict where it's about the personal behavior. Then you can have conflicts around data or facts. So if there is a question about, well, how many athletes attended the 1980 Olympics and there is a disagreement over the facts? Well, we can just check the facts, but we may be talking from memory rather than checking the data. So you can have conflicts around that. Then you have conflict over differences in values, which I mentioned before, different perception, how we see things, we may see it differently. So a woman may see it differently from a man, a young person may see it differently from an older person, somebody from rural Jamaica may see it differently from somebody from urban Jamaica, somebody from outside of Jamaica may see it differently from somebody who lives in Jamaica. So different perceptions. Then misunderstanding, sometimes how we speak, we may be speaking with somebody who is from a different culture. We may be using words that they do not understand and therefore they misunderstood what we meant and they may have taken offense when in fact that was not the intent. So misunderstandings can generate conflict. And of course, just resources. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more as we go along about how these different types of conflicts can be a part of our everyday lives. Now, what are some of the sources of these conflicts that we're getting? So conflicts may arise from our biases. Now, what are these things that we call biases? What is our bias? It may be something preconceived. It may be our worldviews. Some person would say this is our instinctual notions. So these are our biases. So maybe preferring A versus B. We may be preferring that versus this. We may have a few about the Olympics in Tokyo versus football in Rio. These are our different views, but we may have preferences and these, these become our biases. So, for example, one bias could be an inclination or outlook or personal judgment. And let me set an example. I'm, I may prefer watching men's football. So, big up the reggae boys. You may prefer watching women's football. Big up the regular girls. So it's a matter of preferences. And because we differ, we could be in conflict if we're trying to watch the same TV channel on the same day at the same time. Because I want to watch men's football, you want to watch women's football. So our conflict would arise from our biases. Then think about where you are now. You are now a student of the GC Foster College of physical education and sport. What if where you live, you are the only person who has attended college? You become a part of us, those of us who have gone to a college or a university. So it's us versus them. What if you're the only person in your family and your siblings who would have gone on to college? You may see yourself as belonging to a select group those of us who went to college or university, and those of you who did not, us versus them. Any comments about the source? Or this particular source? No comment, let me move on. Another source. Conflict may arise from our disposition. In short, a soul state. Now, a soul state could be about our personality, could be the outgoing person. You know, every time there's something to do, we're gone. We like the outgoing life. So, right now, under COVID, we're extremely uncomfortable because we like going out. And government is saying we must turn our yard, stay in, 
Don't go to the beach. Don't go to any party. Don't go to the river. We can't even go to the movies. Outgoing. So that may be one personality type. What about somebody, another personality type who is very secretive? So they don't share a lot of things. They're very, very, very secretive. They want to keep things to themselves. You know, some persons like to share. They say, boy, I don't swear I should share it at all. That's none of your business. So they're very secretive. And because of that, sometimes we're in conflict with them because we think there should be more forthcoming in terms of what they're saying. Then you have some persons who are very verbal. They like to speak a lot. Most of what they're saying, they're always talking. Sometimes they may be talking to their friends. They may be talking loudly. Whereas with others, they may be more nonverbal. You see their body language reaction. You see their facial expressions. They're not saying much about their body language. They're saying a whole lot. So that's your personality to a certain extent. Now, think about what could be a disposition where it is a prevailing tendency, mood, or inclination, and it could influence how we react to things. So if it is that some person say, you know, I think it is time for men to take over running the society. Some person may say, you're mad. You can't have women around the society. Men are the natural leaders. They are the ones who should run it. So there you have two opposed views. Should there be women leaders? Should there be men as the only leaders? So you may have a conflict arising because you are prepared to support one of those two different dispositions. Yeah, you are disposed to supporting women leaders versus men as natural leaders. So that's another source. Last source, conflicts may arise from our beliefs. And I mentioned them earlier. Our beliefs could be our religious outlook on life. I am Jewish, I am Hindu, I am Christian, I am Muslim, or I am Rastafari. I don't support any of them things that are from Babylon. That's my religious outlook, and therefore, how I interact with persons is based on my religious outlook. I may feel deeply offended if you were to say something about my religious outlook and my religion. So we will have conflicts if you are disrespecting my religion. Then about our status, do you know who I am? I am the famous athlete who won at class, won at champs in that particular year. Are you talking to me like this? Status is important. Or do you know who's my family? My family has been providing athletes and supporting athletics for the longest while. You should have respect for me. So the fact you don't have respect for me, we are in conflict. Then there is a the big question of sexual preferences. Some persons prefer sexual preference A versus B versus so many. Some persons who have strong views about that will be in conflict with those persons because of their sexual preference. What if you go to a school and you're teaching and you find that some of your students have different sexual preferences. Do you disregard them or do you try to accommodate them? Then there's the last question about age. So old people like me should go one side or should we get rid of all the old people in the GC Foster College and have only young persons running it? So we want only young persons because it's now young people time versus old people time gone. Those are sources of beliefs and those will get us into conflict. So I, I set an example of, of belief where sometimes, and if you are from rural Jamaica, you'll understand this one, or you're from a country in which some of these disputes still exist, where a belief could be a state or habit of mind in which we, we put a lot of trust or confidence. And that trust or confidence can be in somebody or a thing. So if you have grandparents who died and left land, there may be a view that there's a natural line of inheritance. And therefore, this natural line may be through the males or the females. And the family may either go along with that belief, or it may be some persons who say, these are modern times. And if grandfather didn't leave away, let us go to the administrator general and have the thing divided up, not based on tradition. Again, you'll have conflict. And in Jamaica, there are lots of those conflicts. 
So that's your source based on belief. Any comments from about the sources of conflict? Not really any comments, just that um, it's really, it's well, majority of them we, well, I agree with, especially when it comes on to like, I've been, I've been in conflicts, you know, I've encountered a conflict with a person when I came up about the sexual preference and whatever. And the only thing you can really do is just understand their perspective. You can't really change anyone because everybody's different and unique in their own other way. You just have to just let them, you know, be who they are, you know? So you resolved it by avoiding them or ignoring them? Honestly, I'm not a fan for ignoring. I, I just, you know, it's all about respect for me. So I don't really ignore. I acknowledge you and, you know, yeah. So yeah, knowledge and respect it, but you realize that you have to just change your attitude to them and you moved on. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Anyone else about the sources of conflict? Majority of conflicts. Yes, the majority of conflicts, what? So majority of conflicts. Our opinion based. Our opinion based. Discussions or conflicts that are opinion based. So there's, I don't know how to put it, but the fact of the matter is that majority of them arise from opinions and everybody has their own opinion. You get me? So there is really no resolution for them unless the persons are in place for what they want say. They might either accept what the person wants say and move with it or do accept it and just move on with life. You get me caught. You know, you can't expect it because you have an opinion and the other person have it. Yeah, well. Yeah, and you're going to face a lot of those conflicts on campus, whether it's online or actually meet face to face because persons have strong views. And just imagine what you just said. The fact of the matter is, but it may not be a fact of the matter at all. And there, there lies the conflict that it's your opinion. You could say, well, my view is this, but you say the fact of the matter, which then puts you into saying this is a fact. And I'm saying it's not a fact. It is your opinion. And we have a disagreement and it can escalate into something different. So I, I just, for, I just for the persons in the country to be intellectual enough to know, say, you can't, everything we use, you can't write, that is your opinion. So you can't want to pass somebody to their opinion. And just know, say, if you want to go with it, just leave it alone, avoid the person. Or you and the person come to a mutual agreement or whatever the case might be. But you know, it's not an intellectual thing, you know, because at all levels of society, people disagree based on opinion. And in fact, sometimes people want sameness. So I want all of who is in my group to agree with me. And the fact that you disagree with me, we can't mm -hmm. keep inside is our way, leave you out or you agree with us. So it's not about an intellectual thing, maybe just that we want sameness, we want support. And sometimes instead of agreement, maybe a consensus around a particular point, maybe a better strategy. So we don't have to agree on everything, but we can say, okay, on this particular point, I'll support you on that, but I don't agree with the rest. So it's a difference you're talking about consensus. But eh? sir, can I eh? ask? Yes. Um, as, it, as it regards to conflict, and um, I think when I when I when I look at conflict and I look at um, looking at history, they decide that normally says that what they say what they say would be fact would be the majority. For instance, um, in in terms of when but when we look at even sports, for instance, when you look at the reason why they brought in the rule of. Um, What's that rule again? Whereas, oh, the fa the false start rule. The, yes. the false start rule, it, it was brought in because the majority, the, the, the persons who were contributing to sports were losing, so they had to find a way in which they're going to resolve that conflict, so to speak. But it wasn't that it was the right decision. Probably having that um, decision, meaning once you, you make an error before the start of the race, then um, that error is actually impeding the success of an athlete, because if we look at what happened with um, Usain Bolt and um, what's his name, Ron, 
Yeah, that that athlete. I can't remember his full name, but um, with the World Championship event, and um, just by having um the false start, he could have actually impacted the career of Usain Bolt. But then look at the different effect that it had on um Rowan Blake. Yeah, I think that's his name. So conflict. For how I look at conflict, I think the side that normally comes out on top is the one that has more the most influence, the one that has the greater majority on their side. So let me ask you a question. You've raised a very interesting question and point. Let us say that the sponsors of athletics and Usain Bolt in particular felt that look. You know, I think that rule would have caused me to lose my investment in Bolt in that meet. And therefore, as a major funder, and I'll get all my friends who are major funders of athletics to say, to the organizing body, I think you should revisit that rule. A one-time false start leading to a disqualification isn't fair. You need to allow the marshal on the field to consider whether there are some circumstances might have, that might have caused it and therefore allow them to decide whether or not the person really false started. So here now it is not the athlete who may be more interested in the outcome. It may be the funders who are saying, we pay for this enormous spectacular spectacle call this meet and we want to see the athletes run we didn't see we didn't pay for them to come here and after one false start they're out of the race we, people want to see not just who are in the stadium but those who are online on the internet want to see them run what if it was what if that view is the one that caused the change What, what if that view was what caused a change? I think that was what caused a change, but not in the way that you're probably describing it. I think it's a case where as um, media, so to speak, they were losing a lot of money. You know, media have a, a great impact on sports. I think they were losing the money for, for um, the instance that I am going to air this program for 20 minutes and then I go to a break. But then after 20 minutes, the race hasn't started or hasn't gone off successfully because why four or five athletes have 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 had a one instance um, false start. So the race has been delayed. And then we look at it, it not only um, derailed that one um, event, it derailed all the other events that are to come down the road. So um, in looking at what you asked me, if that person, if that entity, whether it be Puma, um, one of the big news stations like M N um, NBC and so forth, if our ESP, and you know those big news stations, they contribute a lot of money to sports. If they were to challenge that decision by saying, okay, then I contribute this amount of money to sports, then if they can help to overturn decisions. That's what I believe. The decision doesn't really rest with the athlete per se, it's really with the the, the, the persons who are contributing the, the greater majority of um, funds. Well, we won't have a conflict on that point. No? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Uh, interject. Um, yes, that please. Would, that would necessarily be a bias to other athletes as well. Yes, it would be. So it would cause a conflict between the organizing group and those other athletes. Yes, because other athletes and other countries will be looking at it as if um not because you saying Bolt is global star that he should be given a certain amount of treatment and others should be looked at as less off. Mm. Because the young guy that came from um, Grenada, no one yes. expected him to win the 400 meter, but he even uh, broke the record. Yes. So you'd have to look at it right across the board. You should have a level playing field when it comes to that. I agree with you, but I don't think that what we were saying was, in di was different from yours. I just think that what we're saying is that there are persons behind the scenes, not the athletes themselves, who may be more interested in their investments and therefore may be prepared to lobby to have the rules changed to suit their investment. Not so much to make it um, disadvantageous to one set of athletes, but to be fair to all that athletes. That would be even right as well. That would be even a bias as well. It would be a bias too. That's yeah. fine. That's fine. That's fine. Any other comment about sir, this? Could I raise an Yes, sir, could I, could I raise another one, sir? Sure. Um, look at Casta Semenya, sir. Yes. Um, right, sir. She is um, 
I think what she's a hermaphrodite, meaning that she was born with um, more than one sex, I think. And because of that, she has a greater percentage of testosterone in her system, which would mean in the eyes of some persons in sports, she would have a, a, um, a, a, an advantage over other females. Yeah. So the, the, the issue there is that they're not looking at the interests of this athlete, this person who did not choose to be born that way, right? She didn't choose to have a passion for athletics, but yet because she has she was winning, 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 then they, they did that investigation and they found out that something was not right. So because whoever they might have had in the race that they wanted to win, meaning that behind the scenes they had a lot of money um, pumped into a particular athlete and they were not getting the returns on their investment then guess what happened she is now forced to take um, drugs that is going to decrease the, pro the production of testosterone in her system and um, the advantage that she had that she was born with naturally she has to give that up to other athletes who they were probably born with different muscle group that allow them to run faster different from how she was able to run faster so in that regard it is not the interest of the athletes that are that that is being um considered but i think it as as i had said before it's really the the sponsorship the so persons who are contributing to sports so it's about a bias then because that would be a clear bias that boy someone else don't look like the kind of athlete that we want to sponsor and she's winning and let us investigate her wow so she's winning because so therefore let's try and decrease her chances of winning because we think we don't really like her she's not the kind of poster athlete that we want to show on our ads on tv or supporting this particular brand or that particular brand she doesn't fit that so let's try and reduce her opportunities and our chances of winning by doing something else so yes that would be about a bias but even um sorry even with um russia in the last olympics yes no one no one came out and say what um they were doing so we can basically see that um other not only so that sponsors and so on are having the greater impact on sports but also other countries because russia was doing some illegal stuff and yes. they have been and it, it's on the that, investigation no it's investigated that's why they they had no athletes at um the last olympic otherwise some of those that were created by um the olympic association yeah, i thought I, I thought that they said that it was the state of russia that was sponsoring the doping of these athletes and therefore that's why they banned the state yeah. Yes, I thought that's that is said. true. That's what I that's what I learned as well. So it was the individual athletes or the coaches, it was the state. No, it was yeah. So these are some so good sir, examples of conflict, yes? Yes, sir. So that means that it goes right back to the, 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 the return the returns then, sir, as we were saying before. That because of the investment that they have made, they want a, a return on their investment. So they it literally put them in a place where they have a conflict, also, so to speak, and they have made a decision that I would rather to, to cheat because I want to win. Okay, that's so. Uh, let's look at, let's move on. These are some very good points. Let me, let's look. So, let's, hold on. Yes. Yeah, on, um, on conflict, um, I want to say something. Yeah, um, please. I believe, I believe that. Uh, it's about your supporting details, like statistics, when you look at it, or the resources or data yes. in that can back up your point. So, so, so to say, like, if you have a, if you have a strong belief that you, you believe that your point is right, you should have um, your supporting details to show that your point Okay, so you're moving it from just being my opinion to my opinion being supported by some data. Yeah. Okay. And you think that that would change the conflict? I believe so. Well, that's an interesting point. I think that people can lie with statistics. People can Let's use see. statistics in a particular way that gives you an impression when in fact you're not seeing all. So you have to be also careful that 
because I have a strong view and I back it up with some stats, it doesn't mean that I'm right. It means I have a strong view backed up by some facts. But when you look at the larger picture, I may have left out three quarters of the stats just to make my point. <laughs> Let's look at how we communicate, manage, ownership and control, and perhaps resolve conflict. Let's start with verbal. Now, when we speak about verbal, we're talking about words and tone of voice when we speak. And a lot of times what people are offended by can be the combination of those two things. You can say something to somebody and the words you use offend them, they feel very offended by, they feel disrespected by what you said, as well as you could be saying something and the tone of voice that you say it in offend somebody and say, but you make me feel as if I'm an idiot. You didn't actually say they were an idiot, but the way you said it in your tone of voice, you have left them feeling that you think I'm an idiot. So just the words or the tone of voice when we say it can in fact generate those two responses. Then there are some persons who are offended by, you know, by speaking too loudly, he's speaking too loudly at the wrong time, can't you lower your voice, and therefore it creates a conflict. And then the language that you're speaking, so the words and part of the language, what if you're using street language, or using a language that only yourself and your friends know, and others around you would like to try and understand, and they feel excluded, they may feel that well, the spread of this film, and one with the hero, and say, I'm talking along with them, and I'm them. No, that may cause persons to be in conflict, the language you use. Now, for the non verbal side, there's a lot that we say in our body language. Sometimes the, how we use our facial expression, sometimes how we turn our head, sometimes how we stand up, sometimes how we turn our back, sometimes whether we hiss our teeth. Sometimes all kinds of expressions are included under body language, but sometimes we don't make eye contact because, you know, some person say, you can't look me in the eye because you tell me a lie. It may not be that, but sometimes there are some persons who see it that way. So all these things, body language, facial expressions, eye contact. And of course, there's a famous one in Jamaica where we hear our teeth idiot thing. But we don't say the idiot thing, we just kiss with teeth and gone. And if you understand the culture, you feel that well, this person disrespect me. So all these things add up to nonverbal language and they can in fact generate conflict. One last thing is the whole question of how we now use the phone. So somebody earlier on said that I could be online and I'm distracted by paying attention to some text from WhatsApp or maybe looking at something from Instagram or on Facebook. So the phone culture can be a factor in terms of how we communicate and what we are communicating. Let me move on. Now, some other things to look at. We're going to have all kinds of opportunities to look at how we manage our conflicts. And we have to make some very simple decisions. If we have a disagreement with somebody, should we, we have, should we consider whether we are in the public or in private in terms of how we respond? Because sometimes how we respond in public might be better if we had done it in private or the opposite. We can choose words that cause no harm. So instead of saying something about somebody that is negative, we can choose a word that say, you know, it's okay, and leave it. So the words won't cause any harm, but the words that do cause harm are going to provoke a response. Now, respectful communication requires careful attention. How do we say something to somebody, whether it be male, female, a lecturer, or anybody in the whole faculty that we're gonna be in, or in the, university, the, the college itself, how do we, communicate what we want to say, but in a respectful way so that they don't feel disrespected. That's important because people sometimes say things, but they say it in a way that comes across as being disrespectful when in fact there's no intent. And then a simple methodology that we need to look at when we're communicating, sometimes we need to separate the person from the problem so we can address the problem 
instead of addressing the person. So we may think the behavior is offensive. We can say, you know, I know he is a very respectful person, but what I just saw that with that behavior a while ago was certainly very offensive. No, you're not saying the person was offensive to you. You are saying the behavior was offensive. So it's separating the person from the problem. So you were impacted by the offensive behavior, but you know the person to be somebody else. So you can separate the two and communicate it in a way that the person doesn't feel as if you're attacking them. Now, here are some questions for you. How do you deal, what is your practice of dealing with conflicts? Do you try to ignore conflicts? Do you try to avoid them? Or are you the person who likes to confront them so people have to be part in you whenever there is a conflict? So you're talking about coercion or force. Or has it been your practice to try and negotiate whenever there is a conflict? Or if you can't negotiate, get someone to help you, which would be tantamount to having a mediation. What is your practice? Think about it. Now, it, yes? It is like, depends on the situation. Yes. If you, so, if you have to avoid it, you mm -hmm. avoid it. If Which you, situation would you avoid? Like, for instance, you realize that the, the, um, it is, it is go, it is, this is going nowhere. Like, it's a back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. All right. Avoid, avoid that situation. You can ignore a person that it, every day is a every, every day thing. Like, every time you have, you are saying something, that same person have something to say about it. You ignore that person. But well, suppose they're making a valuable contribution. Would you still ignore them? Deep, that's why I said depends on the situation. If okay, if they are saying something that may be may be valid, you listen to them. If not, you just ignore them. If not, you just ignore them. Exactly. Okay, great. Anyone else? Anyone willing to be the person who likes to just take it on, face up, and just confront it? And you have to be separated because you're not backing down. Anyone is like that? No. No. Me at times. You Depends at times. on the situation. Depends on the situation. <laughs> Whoa. So they have to separate I'm you sometimes. <laughs> Rather to walk with. Yes? At times, like in physical education class, I made strong points and they are fighting against it and I will not back down from the situation. You're not backing down? I'm not backing down because I know that my point is valid. Okay. Okay. No, so they have to separate you. Not backing down. You 100% know you're right and you're not backing down. Fear enough. Anyone else? I'll walk away. Walk away. Yeah. So walk away is what? Ignore. Well, I can't yeah. take some of us. Yes? No, man, I can't take the cut. You can't take the content, John? No. So you just walk away and leave it? Yeah. I'm a jovial so, person. When I try to get me down, then I just cut yeah. So if you're in a group right now and the group is having a discussion and it's all like a conflict, you'll get up and walk away and leave them. Depending on the situation. Suppose it gets heated. Understand? Suppose it gets heated and everybody is defending their point and they're not backing down. Would you walk yeah, away? Yeah, it seems to have stayed away. <laughs> so I will do it. Yes, Paul, I'm hearing you. Yes. All right, so let me wrap up because I think time has left us. So I want to leave you with a couple of tips that you need to just pay attention to because we know run into overtime. Um, let me just ignore this one and move on to the next slide. Um, though important it is. So here are some techniques and wrapping up for avoiding or resolving communication barriers. If you're gonna have to talk about something, agree the method you're going to communicate. Is it email, WhatsApp, or verbal? Is it going to be an online meeting, face-to-face -face meeting, with whom or what? Decide when to talk. And if you're going to do so, listen carefully. Be respectful 
Try and talk in a safe space. Don't interrupt when somebody is speaking and decide what stays private. Last thing now, um, if you're going to have difficult conversations, I think you have to be careful about how you have those conversations. If it's a topic, make sure that you're clear about what is the topic and who is involved and agree on about the same topic. If that person is involved, ensure that all the persons who are involved or affected are present, or only those who are affected are involved are present. Lastly, should it be public or private? So if you're having a conversation online, would it be better if you had it in a private room or wait until you get on campus? Should it be kept confidential? Now, I want to share the last thing with you. We, our sets of values that we use to help us to resolve conflicts starts from this point. Affirmation, find something positive to mention. What are you doing now? What are you doing? Hello, is this, hello, is this um, speaker? Secondly, communication. Speak and listen carefully. Thirdly, cooperation. Work to create an answer that suits everyone, especially if you're in a group. And lastly, ensure that everyone must be present and valued. So, with all of that, enough respect. And thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Pleasure was mine. And ask Miss Thomas to give Sir the vote of thanks for me. Miss Thomas. Jackie, Thomas is not hearing me. Sir, give her mic is muted. All right. Is there anyone who would like to give a vote of thanks to Sir for me? All right. Sir, Sir Hines. Sir. Yes, oh. go ahead. Um, Mr. Hines, yes, on behalf of the students, on, be, on behalf of the GC Foster College and the students who are now engaged in this orientation exercise, I would just like to extend heartfelt gratitude to you for taking the time to share with us some tips on conflict and dispute resolution to encourage us about the different types, about the sources, about the ways in which conflict may arise, and how we are able to communicate effectively when we are resolving different issues. So you um, stirred up different conversations within us, and I'm certain that whatever you have um, disclosed this afternoon, that we'll put it into practice so that we can become better um, nation builders, better contributors to the future success of GC Foster College. Thank you very much and so very well said. I look forward to yes. hearing more about you. Yes, Miss Fagan, thank you so much. Well done. Thank you. All right, Sir Hans, thank you so much again, sir. All right, Paul, and take care. All right. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you are so appreciative of this presentation. Um, we're going to be going straight into a promotional video and they will have our second presenter who is uh, Mr. Raymond Bogle from the registry and he will be speaking to you on the student's obligation. Let's just take a moment and look at the video at this time. Over to you, Mr. Gale. Yes, you can go ahead with the video. Are you seeing my screen? Uh, no, you share your screen for us now. Oh. You're not seeing the shared screen. All right, let's put on. Let's start. <laughs> All right. Right, there we go. Awesome. 
but we're not hearing the, the, the audio. <laughs> not hearing the audio. Are you hearing now? Yes. Awesome. The body and mind contributing to holistic development. This can be your experience at the GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport, the only institution of its kind in the English speaking Caribbean. uses state-of-the-art equipment, including a new 400 meters track donated by the Sport Development Foundation and international comparable training techniques and technology to teach the importance of physical literacy and sport, opening doors for careers in multiple fields, from event management, massage therapy to fitness instruction. The institution offers various levels of education, from certificate to postgraduate. There are quite a few programs that we do offer that you'd call uh, not necessarily conventional programs. We try to get the students optimally rounded so they can introduce different sporting activities to the students when they go out in the world of work. Students are given the opportunity to hone and shape what is learned in theory through practical exercises in the various facilities provided for multiple sporting disciplines. Six years, BC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport, with its well trained staff, has been providing Jamaica and the world with physical education and sports specialists. GC Foster be the foundation for a scientific understanding of the sports, science, and experience disciplines, travel, football, football, basketball, and so on. It also lays the foundation for emotional support in terms of understanding human beings learning how to um, deal with situations that are quite common to group dynamics. The college facilitated my preparation as a referee because of the numerous fields, so I use it to train to keep up my fitness level. It's not very easy over here, but it basically helps you to become a mentally and physically tough person. Nothing in life comes easy, and you have to work whatever it is that you want. They have given me the platform to train and education and to work. So I'm really grateful for the opportunity that they have blessed me with. At the GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport, you can find your place on the field, track, court, in the pool, ring, over the table, across the net, or at the front of the class. The GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport a world-class training institution. so much Mr. Gale and at this time we will be going straight into the presentation of Mr. Raymond Bogle from the registry. Over to you Mr. Bogle. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Park. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I was I was wondering. Good afternoon, sir. I was wondering if I was speaking to myself, but no. No, I'm hearing everybody's getting all lively and anticipating what is going to be said. All right, um, I won't keep you guys long. So it'll be a brief presentation. Now my responsibility here is to speak to you about your obligations as students while you're here studying at the GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport. Now, Mr. Smith, the IT, our IT director, would have outlined in his presentation on how the ISIM student platform works as it relates to the procedure to select and register for courses to be done for each semester. Now, an important part of the registration process, which allows students to access online classes, is the ISIMS student platform, which you were already informed about. Now, failure to select your courses for the academic year, which is 2021 semester, will result in you not being able to complete your course of studies for the 2021 academic year. That being said, you won't be able to sit examinations for that semester. Let me repeat. I hope you all are taking taking notes, so you can, um, if you want to ask any questions afterward, you can feel free to do so. It is important. It is incumbent upon you all to, before each semester starts, to select your courses online. Go to the ISIMS platform, choose your courses for the semester, and select them. Otherwise, you will not be able to sit the examination. Is that clear? Everyone understands that? Yes, yes sir. Yes, yes, yes sir. Okay, awesome. Yes, okay, sir. awesome. As it relates to deferral, a student who is unable to continue his or her studies for financial or any other reasons, whether illness or circumstances beyond your control, may apply to the registrar to differ a program for the semester or the academic year. Requests for the deferral will not go beyond the next academic year or start of the next program. So application for deferral for a semester shall be made in writing. And I must implore upon you students that whatever you do in college, ensure that it is done in writing and a copy submitted to the respective departments, and you keep a copy for yourself for future reference. So application for deferral for a semester shall be made in writing, signed and dated and submitted to the registrar's office by the end of the third week of the relevant semester he or she is deferring from for the academic year. In all cases, reasons for deferral must be stated in that letter of applying for deferral. Now, a deferral allows a student to re-register in the next academic year and is normally granted for no more than one academic year. So you can only defer for only one year, not two years, one year. If the student remains unregistered beyond the approved deferral period without prior notification, that is, without you guys putting in writing, informing the relevant authorities or the relevant personnel, that he or she would like to defer, then the student is considered to have withdrawn from the college and must apply for readmission. So you'd have to start from the beginning. Now, we would have in the past students in the middle of the semester, they just up and leave. No one knows where they are. You just return from a semester break, whether, whether it's a summer break or a Christmas term break, and you don't see John Brown for two months. You wonder where John Brown is. You hear that John Brown got a scholarship to study overseas, or John Brown has migrated. John Brown said nothing to the institution, nothing verbal, nothing in writing. Now, you know in life, life is dynamic. Anything can happen. 
you know, Seth John Brown didn't get through to what he wanted to achieve when he went away and would have to return to GC Foster College. You know, that student is in a lot of trouble because we would not have known that he would have left the institution. He did not sign the deferral form. He would not have informed the institution as it relates to him deferring. So he would have to start from scratch. Please, please be informed and be cognizant to that fact that you need to apply for deferral if you're so if you choose to be away from school for whatever reasons. Is that clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, as really yes, sir. in completion of studies. Where a student withdraws from an examination in course prior to the date set, that student shall be classified as incomplete. Meaning if you have an examination next week and you decide that you are not going to do the exam, you just withdraw for whatever reason, you would be deemed incomplete, even if you have coursework, even if you would have submitted your coursework, all the relevant coursework. Now a student withdrawing from an examination must do so in writing. As I said before, any and everything that you do concerning your studies must be done in writing. A student withdrawing from an examination must do so in writing to the principal and the registrar of the college no less than 48 hours before the examination is held and to provide justifiable reasons for the request. It can just be any willingly you just withdraw just like that because your mind tell you to. There must be plausible reasons and explanation written in written format, not word of mouth, in written format to inform the institution that you are with you are withdrawing from the institution for justifiable reasons. A student classified as incomplete should be treated in the same way as a candidate sitting for the first time. That the student is not referred for incompletion, meaning if you don't put it in writing, just like the previous the, the previous topic of, of deferral, you would have to put it in writing that you are incomplete, that you are withdrawing from the exam, and it must be a, a good reason. Okay. Now for for reset examination, this is the, this is very important. So. Please listen carefully. I must add that every student, it is every student's responsibility. Let me repeat, it is everyone's responsibility to know the coursework grade that he or she would have upon entering an examination. So it is your responsibility to find out from the lecturer who taught you a specific course what is your coursework grade? What is the grade you are going into the exam with? So you should follow up. Each student depends on the course. We do at least three pieces of coursework for the semester. So each coursework that you give, it is your responsibility to find out from the teacher what is your grade and follow up. Be responsible for your own education. Students who have failed a course, I'm on a topic of resetting exams. Students who have failed a course may reset that course at the time of its next sitting. Time of the resets will depend upon the discretion of the college, the desire of the individual, and whether the course is being offered and examined in that semester. So if you do an exam in, the, in this upcoming semester, you would have the next semester, you would have the semester precluding this one to do that reset when the course is being offered. So if the course is being offered next year, September, you would have to do it next year, September. A student who had failed a course is required to register for the course and attend classes. Now, each student must, we go back to the ISIMS platform. Very important. That is your guide for your four years or your two years or whatever time you are going to spend here. 
the ISIN student platform. You need to learn it, love it, hug it up, and treat it like your life depend on it. No, you need to register for that course on the ISIM student platform and you must attend classes. He or she may be also required to undergo academic counseling and or intervention before resetting the examination. That simply means a student may be under stress, under duress for whatever reason. Maybe the course load is too heavy, they have external issues, for example, they may have personal problems, family, whatever. We have a capable guidance counselor who can help to address your issues. And we have course coordinators for each course who you can call upon at any time to assist you. Is, is that understood, guys? Yes sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Incomplete grades. A grade of incomplete may be recorded at the discretion of the lecturer when a student is unable to complete the requirements of a course in which he or she is registered during the current semester. A student who receives a grade of incomplete will be responsible for assuring that all course requirements are complete within one year of issuance or sooner if required by the lecturer. A grade of incomplete, which has not been changed by the lecturer within the year allowed for course completion, will automatically become a failure. I think this is quite clear cut. You will have a year to sort out your affairs as it relates to your grade. So if you have a coursework to submit and you have not submitted it within that year, it will be deemed as a failure. So I implore you guys, because this is college, persons are going to be involved in different extracurricular activities. Person might be involved in sports if the pandemic allows, and um, training, and so on and so forth. You may fall short in completing a particular coursework. Now you have until a certain period of time to get those coursework complete to the lecturer, or if that time has elapsed, which is a year, you will be deemed as a failure and do the course from scratch all over again. Each student has a right to appeal a grade if they fail. Now, academic grading reflects careful and deliberate judgment by the faculty member instructing a course. However, the college recognizes that there may be, on occasions, be an error or injustice in the termination of a final grade. No, we are all humans. No one is infallible. So if you know within yourself that you would have done your best and you would have deserved a particular grade, it is your right to apply and appeal for that grade. Now, you should present that case to the course coordinator who may affect a settlement upon written agreement with the lecturer. Now, you see, it all boils down to written Everything must be done in writing. If the student is not satisfied with the result, as I mentioned before, his or her case should be presented to the registrar in, here's that popular word again, in writing, who will take the matter to the academic board. The result of the academic board is final. I believe the academic VP in her presentation in the upcoming days will touch on that some more. Withdrawal from the program for any reason. A full-time student who wishes to withdraw in good standing from all coursework in progress during the current semester at the college must consult with the office and the coordinator. He or she will file all appropriate forms. There's a form here that speaks to withdrawal from a program. If the student subsequently wishes to resume full-time undergraduate studies, a change of status form must be submitted. Now we have all the relevant documents here, and I believe they're on ISIMS for you to fill out as it relates to withdrawal from a program and re-admittance to a program. Now, last but not least, your attendance to classes is key. It is paramount. It is extremely important. 
tardiness will not be tolerated, students. We are, a, we are an institution of high repute. We are an institution with principles and of good standing and character. Now, students must attend classes to complete a course of study. Now, a frequent absence beyond 5% per semester can result in a lowered or failing grade, possible course failure or withdrawal from the program. So if you're up in your dorm, playing game or doing whatever, God he knows what, and you, and you fail to go to your classes, you may be deemed ineligible to sit that examination. So all that dorm fee and all that school fee, tuition fee, would have gone down, would have gone down the drain. A written explanation must be given for absence from class, and it cannot be anything just casual. If you are sick, a doctor certificate must be presented. <laughs> if you are absent on a day when an assignment is due, you may be allowed to hand in or do a makeup assignment if the absence is officially reported at the discretion of the registrar. Now, the discretion of the registrar means that he or she, which is a registrar, may or may not accept late submission of a coursework. Let me repeat. If you are absent on a day when an assignment is due, you may be allowed to hand in or do a makeup assignment if the absence is officially reported and at the discretion of the lecturer. Now, officially reported, not on the day you should submit your assignment, but prior to the submission of said assignment. So you can't come on the day and say, sir, or miss, you know, I wasn't at school yesterday, so you must be responsible. We are training future educators, future men and women who will change the landscape of society and to change the landscape of the world on a whole. No exam or makeup will be available for more than one week after the absence. So we are strict when it comes to the submission of coursework for particular and specific courses. You may run some risk with some lecturers, but on the most part, our lecturers, they don't play when it comes to the submission of courses. You need to be responsible and you need to be proactive as it relates to your studies. Now, guys, in I will just say this finally. So it was gonna be was gonna be quick. You can ask the questions when I'm through. It is your responsibility to succeed. The success and failure of each and every student in this institution depends upon the students. Yes. We, as staff members at GC Foster College, we play a huge role, but it is your responsibility to adhere to the guidelines. We are here to facilitate you. We are here to offer our help. We are customer service, service agents to you, the students. Without you, we wouldn't have a job. Let me just repeat that. Without you, the students, we would not have a job. So it is our responsibility to ensure that you get the proper teaching, the proper guidance, the proper infrastructure is here and ready for you guys to come, get a degree, be successful. If you need help in any other, in any other aspect of your studies, we have facilities, we have the personnel who are able and qualified enough to assist Okay, so thank you very much, guys, for paying attention. And it was my it was my esteemed pleasure to offer you these guidelines that you should adhere to and keep that in mind. Are there any questions? Any questions going once? Any questions going twice? Um, hello, oh. good afternoon. 
Good afternoon. Um, who, who am I speaking Mr. Mr. Bogo, you're speaking yes, with Monique speaking? Fagan. Hi, Monique. Monique Fagan, sir. Uh, hi, yes, Monique. Sir. I, um, I, yes, I joined the presentation, I think, 2.15, because I had internet problem. So I wasn't yes. there to hear the, the presentation on ISINs. What I want to ask you is, how soon will the timetable be ready? Okay. The VP of Academic, Mrs. Denise Tony James, she will give a presentation, I believe, tomorrow. Let me just double check. Tomorrow or Thursday, as it relates to that, and um, she will let you know when the when the timetable will be will be ready. Since we're since we're going where the college has not gone before, which is a blended approach, as it relates to online and face-to-face -face. you know we have to do things differently but it is out of my purview to speak on the timetable i will allow her to make that presentation so you can okay sir. you hear you hear all about it during the coming week coming days rather okay. i'm sorry yeah thank you you're, you're most welcome monique any other question okay since there are no more questions it was good to make this presentation to you guys. So you take care, stay safe, and protect yourselves and your family. And God's willing, I shall see you upon coming to GC Foster College. We are at the registry. We are we we will avail ourselves to you anytime between nine and four p.m. Monday to Friday for all of your needs. Okay, you can call upon me and the staff in the registry at any time. Okay? Thank you very much for listening. You have a good rest of the afternoon. Thank you so much, Mr. Bogle. Well said. Very informative presentation. I am sure that our students would have learned so much from it. We are going to be going... Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Gale, do you have the song ready? Just checking my microphone. Can you hear me, Mr. Park? Yes. Mr. Holland here. All right. So Mr. Holland okay. is here. And so we're going to be going straight into the next presentation. And this is uh, student security. Now, upon entering the campus and uh, attending class whenever that is possible, you would have some concerns as it relates to being in Spanish town for those who have never been in this parish or in the Spanish town before and in terms of the security of the plant, the campus. Mr. Holland is the assistant plant manager and facilities manager. He will be addressing all your security concerns. Who's good enough? Who's good enough? So kindly Give him your attention as he now presents to you. Over to you, Mr. Alan. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Park. Good afternoon, everyone. I am. Thank you. I'm going to be turning on my video camera just briefly so you can get an idea of who is talking to you, and then I'll be turning it off. But I just want to know if everyone can see that screen that says GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport. Everyone is able to see it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, yes, sir. And you're able to yes, see sir. my face now to see who you're speaking, who's speaking to you? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes sir. All right, yes, good. Sir. So I'm going to be turning off the camera now. So that's Mr. Holland here. And as Mr. Park introduced me, I work out of the, the, the plant manager's office. All right, so let's go. Now, um, the GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport uh, is it going to be your place of study for, what should I say, um, years to come, possibly four years for some of you, maybe one year for some, depending on the program that you're going to be doing. So with that said, I want to greet you with a hearty welcome. And I want to say welcome, of, co of course, to the number one sporting college in the English-speaking Caribbean. Now, I'm going to be talking to you today about campus safety and of course, um, campus security. They are, we are basically one 
and the same thing. So you can, of course, you know, link them as we speak. All right, if you have your questions, you can jot them down, and when we're through, you can ask, but of course, not a whole lot. All right, the campus that we, we, we operate out of, it is a full-time residential institution. That's the first thing. And it is, it is established on approximately 41 acres of land. The specific location is Angels. Some persons say Angels Estate, Spanish Town. And of course, you heard it is in St. Catherine, um, just off Walks Road, really. The, the main direction to get here is just off the main highway or the main road leading from Spanish Town to Linstead, approximately 20 miles from Kingston. Uh, the college is peculiar in that it is the first of its kind to be established in the English-speaking Caribbean, and it started operation in September 1980. Now, the name of the college, J.C. Foster, was so named after Gerald Claude Eugene Foster. Now, that little enclosed red area that you're looking at is what we're going to be talking about today as it relates to security. Those red lines represent the perimeter or the walls of G.C. Foster College. And our department is basically responsible for everything that takes place both along those walls and within that area. I'm sure you will get your, your virtual tour when the time comes, but this is basically what we're going to be talking about this area. Uh, for those of you who can see my cursor, this is the, the main road I was talking to you about that runs from... Um, Spanish Town to Linstead. Uh, this is also Walks Road in this little section. And you would enter the college from either one of two gates, which is along, one is along here, and the other is up in this section here. So that's basically the design or the setup of the college itself as it relates to the perimeter. The role of security and the college itself. Now, campus security is critical to the operations of the GC Foster College. Um, this is because security policies exist for protecting your life and, of course, your property. And we're going to be looking into that a little bit. Uh, it is important also for upholding and enforcing the rules and the regulations which are issued by the college administration. And, of course, it is critical in that it serves the campus community in a manner that enhances the professionalism of our college system. Now, the college itself that I just showed you on the diagram has two main points of entrance or exit. There's a pedestrian gate, which is a small gate, the very first gate you will, you will come upon when you're entering the college. And that gate particularly is for students and staff only. And normally we expect that each student or staff member will have their IDs on them when they're entering the, com um, the campus. This gate opens at 6 a.m. Uh, when students are going on teaching practice, we normally uh, try to possibly give them a little bit more earlier time, but it, the gate opens at 6 a.m. and closes, as closes at 10 p.m. And somebody might say, um, but wait, I'm, I'm going to university. Why would I be shut in? Why, why is it that they're closing the gate? That is because we must bear in mind that little highlight at the bottom that says, this is a teacher training institution, which means there are certain guidelines that we have to be guided by. There are certain policies that we have to adhere to. There are certain expectations of, um, of the college as a teacher training institution. Of course, we know that there are other persons who may not be involved in teacher training, but yet still, the main aim and mantra of the college is that it is a teacher training institution, and so we are guided by that principle. So the pedestrian gate opens from 6 a.m. and closes at 10 p.m., the main gate, however, is for mobile staff. Those are the persons who drive or uh, have some means of transport bringing them in, or students and visitors also who are driving in. So if you have visitors that will be coming to you, those visitors will have to be directed to the main gate, and that's a large gate that is further up the road. Now, what is so important about college campus security? Why is it that we have to hear about this? Um, this is because globally, the mo there are some common types of crimes or incidents that are reported by tertiary institutions. And security kinds of give you a, 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 a heads up in preparing you for what you may face dependent on you know, the nature 
of individuals or communities that you that you that you will um, enter into. Now, the first thing is that many institutions worldwide complain of destruction to property, damage to property, and vandalism of property. There are also incidents of intimidation. That is where somebody will try to use either their body or their words or actions or something of the sort to try to intimidate. There are cases of simple assault. There and are also incidents of intimidation. That is where um, somebody will try to intimidate. We're talking about either their body or their words. Colleges complain of simple assault. That is where somebody might walk past and, you know, puff your chest. Colleges complain of simple assault. That is where somebody might walk past and, you know, puff your chest. Somebody might walk past, pull your hair. Somebody might walk, walk past and bounce you with their shoulder, something to that effect. Then there is larceny. And simply put, that is theft. That's where people steal people things like their phones or their laptops or so on and so forth, even their, their, their personal belongings. Then there is aggravated assault. Now, that is kind of diff different because that goes a little, a little higher in that it might involve some form of physical violence or attack on the individuals in, in the case of a fight or a brawl. Um, colleges also normally experience forcible sex offenses. Um, they normally experience burglary. They normally experience robbery and they normally experience abduction. I'm sure everybody knows the case of that um, visually impaired student from the from the from the University of the West Indies. Uh, her name, I think, is Dean. So we have to be aware that these things exist in our society, and that is one of the reasons why campus security is critical to the orientation process. Now, what aspects of campus security will I be looking at? All right. The first thing I want everybody to be aware of is the fact that security on this campus is everybody's business. What does that mean? It is not the security guards alone who act as security personnel. It is not the dorm securities alone who act as security personnel. It is not only the maintenance department or the facilities managers who act as security personnel. personnel. Everybody who is on the campus has a responsibility to ensure that this campus is a secure place. And so we're going to be breaking it down a little bit for you. I'm getting a feedback. I don't know. Somebody just opened their system and I'm getting a terrible feedback. Brandon, so, Mr. Ryan. Gale. Brandon Ryan. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. So we're going to be breaking it down into four parts. One personal security that is your responsibility to dorm security that is your responsibility plus the dorm security responsibility grounds security that is your responsibility the dorms security responsibility the staff responsibility and the grow the um the, the entire campus security and all so let's go again personal security is your responsibility that's what we're going to be looking at. Dorm security is your responsibility plus the persons who operate the dorm. Ground security is your responsibility plus everybody else on the campus. And then we have the last one with a little asterisk beside it, community security. And I'm going to be getting into that one also so you have a better understanding of what we're talking about. So let's go. Personal security. Uh, college life can be very exciting. It can be adventurous and full of unforgettable experiences. However, I want every single first-year student to know that like any other tertiary institution in the world, you must protect yourself first. In protecting yourself, you have to be aware of your surroundings. And one of the first things that you will get to do is you will get to know the college campus itself and some of the surrounding areas. You must be ready at all times to protect your life. You have to think about preservation in every aspect of your daily life. You have to protect your personal belongings, talking about your phones, your laptops, your clothes, your books, your shoes, whatever it is, even your very room, you have to protect. You have to avoid dangerous or risky situations. Normally, a lot of persons, when they come to college, they think it's a time to frolic, enjoy themselves and just break loose and, you know, have a free for all. But this can lead to danger and it can really lead also to risky situations. And personally, every one of you have to take that step in preventing any form of harm or risk happening to you. You have to be wary of who you trust. You will meet a lot of new persons. You will meet a lot of um, new friends. But you have to, I'm going to teach you a little thing that I learned some time ago. 
that you give everybody the benefit of the doubt, but you treat everybody as a suspect. And what do I mean by that? Uh, be not quick to point fingers, but try your best to always be safe. All right? So it's very critical for you to remember that. I'm going to say it again. Uh, give everybody the benefit of the doubt, but trust everybody as a, um, treat everybody as a suspect. All right? One of the things I want to talk about personal security is about uh, dates. You come to college and you know you're going to be having um, different events, different things going on. People will invite you out. Uh, friends will want you to go places with them. You'll meet new persons. They will want to take you home to meet their parents. Take, they take you to St. Thomas, take you to Clarendon, take you to Manchester, take you to Negril, Portland, places where you have never gone before, places in Kingston, wherever it might be. You have to be very careful when you go these places or when you make up your mind to go these places. No date at all should be a secret. You have to tell somebody that you're going somewhere. So you meet a friend, and the friend intends to take you to Westmoreland. You're from Portland, and you never, you have never been to Westmoreland before. And him said, or he or she says, "Not tell nobody, man. It's just me and you, like a secret. You know, we're gonna have a good time, spend two days, and come back." Uh-uh. The first thing you do is you ensure you tell somebody where you are going. Tell either your roommates, tell the dorm security, tell the dorm manager, tell your parents. Tell people where you are going and don't just take up yourself and say to yourself, I'm going to XYZ place to spend some time with XYZ person. That is how a lot of persons go missing and find themselves in a lot of trouble. If it's even going to a restaurant outside to, 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 to buy a drink or to buy a piece of chicken at KFC, tell somebody who you're going with and tell them where you're going. So you're supposed to inform the person of where you're going and who you're going with. And if you have the ability to leave a contact, leave a contact also. This day and age, I know that a lot of persons meet people online. You are becoming adults now. Some of you are probably adults already. And you know the life that, um, you know the type of life that is being lived today where persons tell you that they are uh, 20 years old and when you see the person in reality the person is 60 so those little hookups are risky too so be very careful with that have the security guards or the dorm warden's number also on speed dial or in your person so that if you're in trouble you can quickly make a phone call all right one of the things i like to tell people is that you're coming to spanish town and i know many persons are afraid of spanish town but the truth is that gc foster is one of the the safest campuses in spanish town and it's at, in its environs we can possibly count on two fingers the amount of incidents of um security breaches that have occurred uh, with students over the many years that this college has been in operation all right it's a normally a safe place but of course you know you don't leave anything to chance then the next thing is dorm security. So that was personal security. We are now at dorm security. The GC Foster College has one of the most secure tertiary residential facilities in Jamaica. The college dorm is made secure. How? One, there's a perimeter made of chain link fence that goes right around the dorms. Now, I'm not talking about the red lines that I showed you around the campus itself. Those red lines represent a block wall, but the dorms themselves, the dorms themselves are secured by a totally enclosed chain link perimeter fencing, and the gates are normally locked, and they can only be opened by the security guards at the request of the department that I am, I am, I, am, I currently work out of. There is also normally a 24-hour security guard presence at the dorm gate, the main dorm gate entrance. We have three dorm, female dorm security guards at work there in the days, and at nights we have one of the official security guards at work with our security team from, from guardsmen that normally takes over at that gate. We have closed-circuit TV cameras at critical areas in the college, so you will see those runabouts, a lot of movements that occur on the campus are recorded. And of course, we can quickly go to those if needs be. The, 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 the doors or the grills to the dorms um, have what we call an electronic card access. And so persons who are getting access to the dorms have to do so using their electronic card. Now, this is critical for every one of you. Um, if you do get access to, your, to a card, your card is your card. 
Your card is not for your friend. Your card is not for your brother. Your card is not for your sister. Your card is not for your husband or your wife or anything like that. Your card is for your sole purposeful use. And of course, if bridges are found in any one of these areas, uh, I think Miss Thompson, when she speaks about dorm management, she will tell you that you could possibly lose your space on the dorm. And of course, other things could happen that could be very, very uh, dangerous. We have um, secure dorm doors that you will have to lock, dorm rooms, room doors that you will have to lock also. We have escape ladders at the back just in case of um, fire hazards or any other hazard. And we have a manual logbook that every student who is going to be leaving the dorm or leaving the college campus is required to sign in and sign out of. We don't want a case where we're looking for a student and we hear that a student gone home to Clarendon or gone home to, um, to Manchester. And when we check the book, we don't see any record of that. All right. So we have a manual logbook where you're required to log in or log out, log out when you're leaving or entering the, um, the college itself. Of course, there are also regular dorm checks by the male and female wardens or dorm managers, all right? Campus security. This campus is currently secured by Marksman slash Guardsman Limited, all right? That's currently. The perimeter wall secures the property fully, so the wall runs right, right around the campus, and that's the red line that lines I showed you on the diagram. In the daytime, there are four active unarmed security guards on duty, all right? And at nights, there are six active security guards on duty. How does that work? In the day, one is at the pedestrian gate, two are at the main gate, and one does patrol. In the night, three are at the, um, three are at the main gate, one is at the, the dorm gate that I told you about, so that's four. And then we have a male patrolling with a security guard dog. That dog makes up number six. All right, so we have active patrol at nights also. On each shift, one guard serves as a patrol officer, as I said earlier. Now, there's an ID system in place at the two points of entrance, where once you come in, after a while, of course, the security guards will know some of you, but you have to display your IDs at all times. When you're entering at the main gate, if you're driving in, IDs will be required. If you're entering through the pedestrian gate, your ID is still required. And of course, uh, you, you, you are normally advised to have your IDs visible, all right? Now, incidents on campus, let's say there's an incident. Incidents on campus can be reported to the security guards. Any one of the security guards, they would normally move it up the chain. It can be reported also to the dorm manager or the dorm warden, or it can be re uh, reported at this office where I'm currently doing this presentation from, which is the plant manager's office. And information also can be left at the front desk, information desk, but it all depends on the nature of the incident. Some incidents you may not want to leave at the information desk. Some incidents you may not want to tell the security guards. Some incidents you may not want to tell the manage the dorm manager or the dorm ward. Some incidents you may not some incidents you may have you might have to report it to the to the to the um Mr. Park, who is the guidance counselor. Some incidents you may want to report it directly to to to, to your, your grade supervisor or your uh your 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 somebody who is a senior to you or something to that effect. So it all depends on the situation. But there are means of reporting incidents, which of course will lead to investigations being done and moved on as is necessary. All right, and community, sorry, community security is the last type of community I want to talk about. Sorry, last type of security I want to talk about. Now, once students leave the campus, security becomes a personal issue. You see, once you go to, through those two gates, you now are responsible for yourself. We have to remember now that this is an institution that caters for young adults and adults. And so we cannot expect that you will not want to go home or go somewhere with your friends. But once you leave the campus, security now becomes your responsibility. You have to make sure that you log your departure time and the destination that you're heading to at the dorm security gate. You must also inform a friend or the dorm manager of your intended destination. If it is possible and you're going on a date or you're going to buy some food, take a friend with you 
or walk with a group of friends. I normally, uh, in, I normally encourage students to walk in groups of about five or six. If you're going to Angels to buy KFC or pizza, or you're going to the restaurant, walk in groups. If you're walking, if you can find a taxi man that you can trust, you don't go alone with that taxi man. You go with your friends just the same. You try to travel in daylight hours when arriving or leaving the college, and that is between the hours of six to six. You travel in groups and visiting restaurants, as I said before, and you try to travel with marked or recommended taxis, and you try your best to avoid blind dates. As I said to you, the college is really secure as it relates to um, incidents. So most of the times, it's when you leave the campus that you have to be uh, most aware. In conclusion, realize your role in keeping safe. Every one of you have that responsibility. Don't say, I expected the security to do this. I expected nobody to take up my phone. I expected nobody to take up my laptop. You have to make sure that you play your role in keeping yourself safe and keeping your, uh, your items safe. Secondly, realize your role in keeping the campus safe. Some of you will have friends that would want to come here and would want to go on the dorm. Try to take a no-nonsense approach from no. Tell them, listen to me, if I take you on my dorm, I will be jeopardizing the safety of those who live on the dorm with me as well. You have to practice that from now. You need to realize your role in keeping your college mates safe. A lot of times people have altercations. I listened to the presentation earlier about conflicts. People have conflicts and they want to prove to them, but, and them come from Moby or them come from Spanish town. And so them go for them friend and whatever it might be. That is foolishness. We are becoming professionals and we need to learn how to solve our conflicts professionally so you need to realize your role in keeping your college made safe and lastly try to have emergency contact numbers and speed dial for the fire department the police department the dorm security the college security the wardens your parents even and a trustworthy colleague with that said um, i'm basically finished yes give me one quick second I'm basically finished. I want to know if there's anybody who have any questions right here behind that box. Who have any questions that would like to ask about dorm security, or sorry, about security on a whole? Um, Mr. Alan, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. One quick sec. Just give me one quick second. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, would it also be a breach if? You are living on campus, and um, an off-campus student also, you, you, that person comes on your dorm? All right. The dorm securities have a policy where they do not normally allow students who are non-residential students to go on the dorms. They have that policy. However, they may be allowed to go to the sick, the nurses' quarters, right? But there's a policy where they do, they do not allow non-residential students to uh, visit the dorm or to go on the dorm. So that's a no-no. And they will talk about that when, they're, when their time comes for their presentation. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Good Any afternoon, uh, my name is Cedric Coleman. Yes, sir. Um, is there um, student, is student a part of the security setup as well? Um, in terms of being an official security officer? Not or a part of the security official, committee the or so. They have decisions and so on. Well, one of the things about the college is that the college has a, as a, as a, I don't know if I should call it an open suggestion um, platform where if you see something that can be changed and you make a suggestion, yes. But we have a, a security hierarchy that starts from our office moves down through the hired security guards, goes down through the, the dorm security guards and also the student council. So yes, in some aspects, the students do play a part through the students council. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. So if there are no other questions, I'm going to be turning back. Yes, go ahead. Somebody has a question. Yes, I'm Arjani Kuliam, sir. Yes, Ms. You Williams. said um, the dorm is open at 6 and closes at 10 p.m. What if a person who lives on dorm come after 10 p.m., sir? All right, that's a very good question. What we normally have is that we normally have students who 
at nights they try to go grab a bite to eat or so on and so forth because of the the, the 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 setup of the college remember the college is a residential college you know it's a residential institution and so meals are normally provided so we try to tell students listen you need to try to get on campus by 10. Now, we're not going to say if you get here a little bit after 10, we won't let you in. But we try to tell you, listen to me, try to get here by 10 because the gate, there's a serious policy at this college because of the location of the college where we close the gate at 10 p.m. You do not want to be on the streets in Spanish Town at 10. You do not want to be on the streets of Spanish Town after 10. So we normally advise students that, Listen to me, whatever you need to do, get it done by X time, get back in. We can swear for you when you're here. We can protect you when you're here. But if you're outside of the college campus after 10 o'clock, there's little or no help that we can give to you. But we understand that there are situations where students live very far. They may be traveling, and sometimes they may get back late and so on and so forth. So we try our best to assist. But if it is a policy where the students say, oh, me a big man or me a big woman, and I need to go a road or whatever, you're on your own with that. You will not be let into the college campus after 10 o'clock. You will not be, be allowed to come through the gate after 10 o'clock if that is the scenario but of course you know there we have um an understanding of various scenarios that will be that could be looked at will that answer the question miss williams i have Thank one you. more question sir yes yeah, so last question and i'm turning over back to mr park uh, Go ahead. Um, do, you, do you think the yes i have um four secret um six securities in the night and four in the Day. Day. Mm -hmm. Do you think that is sufficient to protect that much perimeter and also the students and everything that is? All right. So in the day, we have four security guards from Marksman, but we yes. have the dorm security. You have to remember That's that we different mentioned. from the four. Yes, it's different from the four. So the dorm security so is different. It's different from the four. And it's also so different much, from the six. So how much dorm security is there? We have three dorm securities. We have two dorm wardens, or one dorm warden and a dorm manager. Okay. Right. And remember, I said to you that those dorms are secured electronically. We have to swipe a card to get in. So that's another issue, also. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. So with that said, um, thank you for the questions. Thank you for the opportunity, also, to present to you. Remember what I said to you: security is everybody's business. All right. So don't be telling somebody mind your own business and leave me alone let me do what i want to do no it doesn't work like that here we are all responsible for each other and so with that said um i know you'll be enjoying your stay at gc foster college and of course when you do come on campus we know of course that you will be abiding by the security protocol and the rules thank you very much for listening everybody mr park yes sir thank you so much sir yes, you're welcome um i want to make emphasis place emphasis on the fact that students you are responsible for your personal items. So we know we're operating within a COVID-19 pandemic. Once that is regulated and is controlled and the cases have been reduced to the point where the government lift the disaster uh, restriction act and allow students to come back on dorm and to be having face to face you'll be interfacing with students both in class and on the dorm for those who will be um, taking up residential uh, taking up the, the offer to be on, on, on the halls of residence what we find is that a number of students are nonchalant in respect to how they treat their per personal items. Students have lost large quantities of money because they just leave it on their bed or they put it in their wallet or, or they, they, they left it in a suitcase and they, they left the room. And we're saying that you cannot treat your personal items in this way. It's a communal space, and although you're in your room, there are other persons that will be assigned to that room, your, your roommate. And as Sir has said, you have to treat everyone with a measure of 
trying to, to, to give them the benefit of the doubt, but at the same time, they are a suspect. So until you get to know the person, or even if you know the person, I would suggest that you deal with your personal belongings in a more secure way. Also, while you're on the road, may I advise you and encourage you to also turn on that location icon on your phone that indicates something has gone wrong, we will be able to track you. All right? It's a very useful icon. We're in the technology age. Okay? All right, so we have one more presentation to go, and this will be from Mr. Damore Williams. He's the male warden. And before we go to him, I want you to go to that, go to that orientation program that you would have received. And at the back of it, you'll realize that you have the college song. Usually, we would, if it is face-to-face -face orientation, in the evening, students will be practicing the song and ensuring that you are familiar with the words. So at the point when school would have begun, you would have been so abreast with it that you know the words and can sing it to the tune. But we're in a virtual space, and so we're going to facilitate you catching on to the tune and learning the words as the song is being played. So we're going to be playing the song, and we are encouraging you now to just find that page. It's at the back of the program. All right? and uh, listen to the words so that you can get familiar with it. All right? So over to you, Mr. Gale. We're going to be listening to the song at this time. Sir Gail, your mic is muted. I'm not sure if that is the issue. again see you see that we're having some technical difficulties so let's take mr demore williams he will be speaking on dorm life and we are doing this with the hope that we would have weathered the storm with the pandemic and in short order students will be allowed to have face-to-face -face classes and persons will be allowed to take part in communal living in communal living on the door all right so mr demore williams will be speaking to us at this time making his presentation on dorm life over to you mr williams Can go again. Go ahead, Mr. Williams.
Kena je pun mesti Mr. Williams seems to be having some difficulties. All right, Mr. Gale, are you ready? Are you ready, Sir Gale? Are you hearing? Yes. Right. Please um, restart. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the college song. Take a listen. Go ahead. No, start to talk. are hearing clearly. I'm not hearing it quite. Miss Thompson. All right, Miss Mr. Williams, are you ready? Sir Williams, are you ready? not hearing you so not sure what is that name hello yes sir all right so um is mr williams ready i am trying to get a response right from him now. All right. So as um, in the meantime, I think that it, it would be prudent for all of the students to have a, a good grasp of the college song. So we're going to sing it one more time and then um, we can um, 
move into the other presentation. Uh, just we to note that we were this not was hearing, we were not hearing the, the song previously, you know. Oh, you weren't hearing it? No. Oh. I need to turn it up. All right, let me turn it up then. All right. Are you ready now? All right, just a minute. Let me ensure that this is sharing. I think one of the issues when you're dealing with an online um, medium, all these things have to take into consideration. All right. Are you hearing now? Can I get it any louder? Mr. Williams, are you ready? I notice your mic is not muted. He's, Mr. Williams is having some issues. Um, he's there, however, um, we're not hearing him. He's hearing all of us, but we're not hearing him. And so he's getting another um, computer. Okay, all right. All right. Um, all right. So for the persons that are asking questions related to their academics, the VP of academics, Mrs. Stoney James, will answer these questions. I notice in the chat that you're asking questions. Save the questions until tomorrow, where we have the presentation with Ms. Mrs. Stoney James from 1.15 to 3.30. All right, so you can ask all your questions relating to academics around that period, all right? All right, Mr. Gale, are you ready now? Again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just bear with us a, a minute. We're having, we're on the last lap, but we're having a little challenge with the technology. I hope you can hear me though. Yes, I'm hearing you, sir. All right, great. Is there one takeaway and anyone can answer or give a comment. Is there one takeaway that you can uh, comment on from we began this afternoon? Is there one thing that you would have learned or would have appealed to you that you'd like to share? My good afternoon, Monique Craig on here. My one takeaway, um, my one takeaway would be um, from the presentation that we had with Mr. Hines and the quotes that he said resonated with me when they basically speak about the fact that whatever we experience, whatever we have experienced in the past, and whatever we have ex whatever we are experiencing now in the present, the actions that we will undertake nor will determine the future that we'll have which basically means that we might not have excelled in high school we might not have been the bright spark we might not have been the best at, at sports in general but we have a, an opportunity now in which we 
can make rights the wrong of our past so that we can have a successful future. That means that we have online classes, we have to be at our classes on time, do our assignments behind the scene. Um, as the representative from the registry mentioned, be abreast with our lecturers to know that um, if we have any issues with coursework, we report them before the due date, stuff like that, so that we are equipped so that we don't have any last minute issues. That's my, my most um, important takeaway. Activities yeah. from the past and the yeah. present. Um, yes. Yeah. yes. We have to be proactive eh? and ensure that we are yes, intentional sir. in what we do strategic in how we plan for our future, right? And as you rightfully said, it doesn't matter what has happened in the past. Some persons would have made some mistakes and um, depend on your age, uh, your emotions would have driven you to be making such a, a poor choice. But now that you have gone through that experience, take it as a learning experience and use it to channel you into a positive frame of mind and to allow you to make a better choice when or whenever the situation would have presented itself again. And in planning for your future, as you rightfully say, what you do today will ultimately affect the outcome of your tomorrow. And so it is very important that we plan strategically for our future. There's a little um, poem we would have learned. Well, I learned it in primary school, and it speaks about the heights of great men, reach and kept, were not attained. And kept, were not attained by sudden flight, and, but, but while they, while their companions yes we're toying upwards through the net yes if we work hard if we work towards our goal we ultimately will be the winners and we will achieve our goals all right i see that the next presenter is ready mr williams yes, so will you. can you hear me yes i can hear you clearly are you hearing me is everyone yes. hearing me Yes, we're hearing you. So, All right. ladies and gentlemen, yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. sir, Demore Williams, he is the male dorm warden, and he will be presenting on dorm life. Mr. Williams have a wealth of experience, having been a student and now at a managerial level at the college very quickly, someone who has um the great admiration for both students and staff members here in the way he conducts himself and he's sorry the way he conducts himself and so he will be presenting to you at this time um hold your question until the end of his presentation all right thank you over to you mr williams all right thank you mr park good evening once more everybody i good evening Good evening. Yes, I'm very excited to spread this um, group of information that I have prepared for you guys based on dorm life. All right. Um, boarding is not a right, but a privilege, I should say. Let me repeat. Boarding is not a right, but a privilege. Um, I will brief you on the history and the current dorm life um, liberty that we used to undergo and what is happening currently. Um, as a student back then, dorm life is pretty much exciting. Um, over the years, like me myself now do the bachelor's in education. I have spent four years here at GC Foster College on the dormitory, and it was a very warming experience. Um, as it relates to ragging, let me elaborate on ragging for a while. The history of ragging, it is normally done 
during the first semester of the college from September during orientation towards um, boxing, which is held normally in November. But based on the current situation with the pandemic, it is not as planned as it's supposed to be. Um, no, ragging slash grubbing is normally done in the evenings where the senior students and the student union, we prepare nightly activities, stuff that will actually be more um, what should I say? Beneficial in a sense, because I have been through the grubbing and I have seen where it has helped me a lot. In, in some cases, it was a bit harsh, but I ended up pulling through because it's college, new environment, new people. It helped to build you, whatever. Um, we normally in the nights like riding where we do some torturous stuff to be very honest to um students but it it helps because as a student keeping us up late at nights just to rag us actually helped me as an individual because normally i couldn't stay up late to do assignments and all of that but because of the ragging keeping us up late being annoying and all of that helped me as an individual to stay up that i could actually complete my co-works etc etc um behavioral pattern on dorm no i honestly used to give a lot of trouble i could say and thanks to miss audrey thompson she was one of those who helped me to become a better young man. And also to groom me in the sense of holding this job position. Also, I would like to thank Mr. Davis and alongside with my coach, Mr. Finley, who also helped to groom me as a student on the dormitory to become who I am currently. All right, so I will be moving into some dorm issues. All right, first thing I want to touch on is a thing they call um, online shopping. <laughs> Doesn't necessarily mean shopping online with a credit card or whatever card that you use to shop is basically when we go by the line area that we do laundry, we normally have cases where students miss clothes and personal belongings on the line, right? So I would implore you when you get here doing your laundry to stay with your clothes, watch your clothes until they are dry because most of the time, it's when you turn your back, that's when the clothes go missing because you might just leave to go get something to eat and by the time you turn around to go back down to the line to check, there's a gap. All right, so the next thing I want to point out is um, dorm violation. No, one experience was when I was in first year, there's something that we call the conference night where that is the night before boxing. That so happens that um, the dorm was messed up pretty bad by students and it actually caused some serious problems with administrative staff and us as students. So we have to um, do all that repairs to get back the dorm where it was. Deportment of classes and college functions. No, there are times when students don't really like to go to like devotion and that's where most important stuff is being 
speak or said. And normally, when you're not present there, you will miss some valuable information. And then afterwards, you're going to say, oh, I didn't get this information. Why? Because you were busy on the dorm sleeping or doing whatever you were doing. So it is a must when you're on the dorm that you report to every college function. So you guys will be eligible or has a good record to um, maintain position on the dorm. Let's see. Um, last but not least, at the end of the semester or school year, normally we send out a application form stating that you are seeking boarding for the dormitories. No, based on the situation at hand. We have stopped issuing out the papers because students have been misplacing them and coming back for an extra one, which we are not equipped to issue so much to um, students that are losing them so easily. However, um, we upgraded the system by the IT lab and it is now online. So if you miss the deadline in which you are supposed to apply for boarding then you're going to be in trouble because there will be others that who are seeking boarding that wants the opportunity to be online gonna apply and then automatically when school reopens you're gonna come back and saying that um how is it that i can't come back on the dorm because i was there last year or last semester whatever it is it's simple because you didn't apply for boarding so i implore you guys at the end of the semester slash school year to apply it is very very important all right any questions as it relates to the dorm hello Any questions? No, sir. Okay. No, we don't. All right. All right. Um, so that. Sir, I, yes. have, I have a question, sir. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I have, something happened with my internet, and I wasn't hearing part of what you said. Uh -huh. Um, in the case where um something occurred and I never got the chance to take part in a college function. Um, is there a possibility that instead of not having the chance to be on um, campus for another semester, skateboarding resumes for January semester, but when it comes to September semester, September semester next year, is there a probation that we can go on that um, protects us? So, for instance, if I have any um, infraction this semester, I'm on haul, that I am placed on probation instead of just say you, you're not allowed to live on. Okay. All right. Um good question. All right. Um there there for example, when you're on scholarship, right? Hearing? Are you hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Yes. For example, when you're on scholarship, right? On the contract that you sign, there is a part that indicates that you must attend college functions. Also, on that same form that you sign up for boarding, if you read properly, you will see where it indicates that um, college functions, devotion or whatever it is, it is a must that you guys apply to the rule, attend the college functions because sometimes you are actually monitored and you're not you're not even in the mindset to know that yes you are being monitored because you don't expect somebody to be watching but trust me it happens so for example there are some lecturers that are assigned to go on the dorm for regular checks and 
for example, if there is devotion that is taking place and we come up on the dormitory for a routine check and you're seen there doing something else outside of being at the devotion and you're not sick or have a valid reason um, not to be there, then you can be penalized. All right, just ahead, you ask if you'll be placed on probation. This is dependent yes, on the type of infraction that you would have committed, the frequency, and your attitude towards uh, the persons who are in charge. So it is more subjective than objective, you getting a chance to be placed on probation. So my advice to you is to, once you have been registered on ICINS, download the GZ Foster College Handbook for Students and be okay with it so that you would know the rules and regulations governing both campus living, the rules that are related to the halls, and so if you are in breach, you know exactly what are the penalties that are assigned. All right? Thank you, sir. All right. Are there any, any more, more questions, questions for Mr. Williams? Hello. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Williams. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Um, I'm asking um the students that are on scholarship for this year will the will the uh, the pandemic affect that in any way? Repeat that for me. The, the students, students that are, are on scholarship. scholarship. Yes. Scholarship, yes, sir. Will the pandemic affect that in any way? Because um I'm wanting to know if there will be a case where I'll be. On, on campus, I will the entire school year be spent at home or whatever. Well, that is a good question, you know, sir. But um, I don't think I am the person to answer that question. It right. is more of the administrative staff, sir. Right. So the the VP of academics. You said that you're on scholarship, right? Yes, sir. Uh, and the scholarship would have been given for a particular enrollment or is it a straight scholarship for a particular sport sports scholarship sir. i was given right. a sports scholarship and you're enrolled you're enrolled to which program um the bachelor's in education okay all right so mrs stoney james will speak to that tomorrow so you can save the question and ask her and you will get some amount of information as it relates to that, all right? All right, sir, thanks. Great. Okay. Any more questions as it relates to online? All right, so if there are no more questions, it has been a very good afternoon and we want to thank Mr. Williams for taking some time to address us. Thank you very much, Sir Williams. Good. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the first day of our orientation. Mr. Let Park? me just go over what would have been presented to us. So, you would have learned some information regarding ISINs. Can anybody say or give me one point that you have written down? of the ICIN system. Uh, 
And I don't want Miss Fagan to answer. I want somebody else. Could you please repeat that? All right. I want you to give me one point from what you have learned from the presentation made by Mr. Smith on the ISIN system, using the ISIN. So every, everyone is of faith with how to, or the procedure as to how to register for the course, for a particular course, no, or to register for your courses? No, yes. sir. Regarding to that, um, no, sir. Because I missed that, that um, lecture. You ended late? <laughs> Sir, so question. You register for your courses through the ISIMS platform? Yes, how to click on and to ensure that you have secured your space on the the ISIMS so that you can join the classes. I have a question. Hello? Before we take the question. Because I'm sure that Mr. Smith would have gone through that section of it. Excuse me, sir. Yes, um, Mr. Park, what is it that you're asking? All right. Do you know how to go on to ISIN and to select your course? Yes, okay. sir. But we are all having a problem that we're... Every time we try to access it, it's telling us that we're wrong. So I'm guessing that we need the ID number to yeah, enter I, before I was we ask go through with that. Oh, I get you, I get you, I get you. All right, maybe it is a case so, where your ID number was not yet prepared for you. Uh, no, Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith it was, are you there? Uh, Mr. Mr., uh, Mr. Gale here. Um, yeah. If, if it if it has not been sent to you already, um, it might have been an oversight. I'm not sure because we were told that it was sent. However, um, it will be sent in um, as soon as possible. All right. All right. So everyone is having that particular issue. You have Mr. Smith email. Just shoot him an email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and let you know that you have not yet received the ID or your ID number, right? Can you remind me of the email please? Somebody was speaking. Can you remind me of that email please? All right. Once you have this link, All you're right. a part of the, the <laughs> you're a part of this orientation process. So you would have received the link. It is it, it is sent in it. The email address is sent in it. Oh, so let's okay. go back on to that um, That's email. It. I think, I let me just, um, Mr. Park, excuse me. Yeah. All right, so it's support. <laughs> um, it was sent in an email, but let me, for the for the sake of this um, Type platform. It in. Type it right. in. So it's support yes. at gcfc.edu.jm. Mr. Smith, just, just type it in the, in the chat so that they can see it, so they won't make a mistake. Okay. All right. This is Mr. Gill, by the way, sir. <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry, sorry <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah. All right. So I'm going to type in now so that you can have a, um, a good understanding. All right. All right. Good. Hmm? All right. So the lady that had the question. What was the question you wanted to ask? No, if I when you have it open, we know right, you right. Please remember to mute your mic, please. Thank you very much. Because we don't have our ID numbers. All right. So you see the the email address that Mr. Smith sent? Yes. Support at gcfc.edu.jm. Yes, sir. Right. So those who don't have their ID numbers, just kindly send him an email so that you can um, quickly send your ID numbers for you, so that you can select your courses, all right? 
Okay, would that be an email acknowledging our full name and stating that we are um, bachelor students or just an email and you will be able to acknowledge us? No, man. State in the, the program that you are a part of and your concern. Thank you so much. We give your name also, right? Sure thing. Very good. All right. Um, sir, could you repeat that for me, please? Speak up a little. Could you repeat that for me, please? Well, in the email that you're sending to Mr. Gale, ensure that your name is there, the program that you are engaged in, and your concern. You're going to send an email, all right? Yes, sir. You're not going to send it in this group. Mr. Parks? Yes, ma'am. This person who is coming from a different program, going over to another, do they have to um, pay money to get different ID cards? Mr. Um, Gale? All right, so once you have paid your miscellaneous fee, um, that is covered in it, all right? That's the third five, right, Mr. Gale? Right. Miscellaneous fee right. covers their your ID um, um card. All right, thank you. Okay. All right. Very good. Are there any, are there any more questions before we go? Um. Yes, I have another question, Mr. Sir. Park. Which yes, team? I have another question. Miss Reynolds here. Yes, Ms. Reynolds. Um, yes, so school school starts officially October 5th. That's next week, Monday, right? Right. Okay. Um, and another question now. Um, I was told that the school offers um, math as well. So I want to know how do I go about paying for that as towards, you know, my school, my enrollment in the school now. Oh, all right. Hold that question for Miss. Is Tony James, who is the VP of Academics. Okay, so and that she will be speaking tomorrow. She'll be speaking tomorrow, yes. All right, thank you, Mr. Park. You're welcome. Sir, uh, after I sending in registration fee, should we get Ms. back Ms. an email from the school? Please, Ms. speaking. Masay, Masay Brown. Okay, Masay, what are you saying now? After sending in the email with the receipt for the registration fee, should we get back an email from the school? Mr. Mr. Gale? Um, I didn't hear that. Um, could you please repeat that question? Come again, Nancy. After sending in the receipt for the registration fee, should we get back an email from the school? Um, a fee to uh, um, an email to acknowledge the receipt of such yes. a okay. Um, yes. I think you will receive. Um, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. I think the accounts department normally um, acknowledges the receipt, and then now you will be able to go forward in terms of your registration and so forth. Um, what we can do is to get a, a clearer understanding, and then we will share that with you. All right? Thank you. All right, so you have been a very good set. I'm so Tomorrow we will begin at 9 a.m. You notice on your program, we will have a break from 12 until 1. And so at that period, we'll just ask you to refresh yourselves and then rejoin us at 1.15 for the next presentation. So we'll start at 9, uh, the first presentation will split in two. We'll have a presentation from Nurse 
from 9 to 9.30. And then we will have from 9.30 a representative from the Sajikor uh, Life. They're going to be speaking about the health card and how you and how one obtains the health sure. card system. All right? Or have access to the health card. And then we have another presentation from 10 through to 12, and this will be coping with stress. We understand that persons now, in particular those who would have been active, now are restricted to the boundaries of your home, are experiencing some amount of stress. How do we deal with this? How would we cope with this? The uncertainty of school and finding the money and the anxiety that goes with it. Uh, we have a very good presenter and uh, she will be presenting to us. So have your questions ready as it relates to coping with stress. Then we'll take a break. As I said before, from 12 to 1, we will join at 1.15 or before 1.15 for the next presentation from Mrs. Tony James where all your academic questions will be answered, hopefully. And then we will have a tour, virtual tour, where you'll see some departments on display. So we'll be looking at the library, the registry, and the accounts department. All right, so that concludes the day's proceedings. Thank you so much for adhering to the rules and for keeping your mics off for most of most of you and we look forward to our meeting tomorrow you will not see so much of me tomorrow because the moderator for tomorrow is miss unique edwards and she is the oh lord it slipped me i'm getting old uh, all right i don't remember her title so she will be on tomorrow she's a part of the orientation committee and she will be guiding us through the proceedings. Thank you so much for coming on. See you tomorrow. Hope you won't have any network problem and the internet connectivity will be there and even stronger, all right? I need to see more faces, so dress appropriately. Put on the face for the ladies. Put on whatever you need to put on. Put on decent clothes and have your, your, your videos your 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 camera is open for tomorrow all right people yes sir thank you sir thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank have you. a good evening have a good evening thank you sir all right here all right before we go before we go let's listen one more time to the the college song right are you ready mr gail ready all right let's go It is woefully low, Mr. Gay. Woefully low. Arm club. It starts at 9 a.m. I gotta go to 7. No. <laughs> Mr. Gale, Mr. Gale, we are not hearing it, so I think we need to work on that for tomorrow, all right? Thank you. All right, so thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good evening. Thank you, and you too, sir. Likewise, sir. Thank you.